Hey, this is Dennis Barati, and I'm here with Kramer Corner and uh, Eric Broadbrent, and uh, this is a great opportunity for me, and uh, I love this show. everyone happy tuesday to you all welcome to kramer corner we are live joined this evening by a guest that i've known pretty much half of my entire life i'm very happy to have him back again you've seen him over here on the evh and gear tv show uh some some months back many months back you know him from the johnny bean show you know him from rob's evh uh, guitar tv and all those good things mr rob johnson how are you my friend hey eric how you doing buddy i'm doing good i'm doing good thank you very much for the invite i really appreciate it I'm thrilled to have you here. And I mean, I can't think of a better guest to be talking about some really cool, nostalgic uh, Kramer guitars and some really, really cool EVH guitars. We're going to explore a few of them. We're not going to go see all of your guitars tonight because we've, we know we've got to see a lot of those in different shows, but there's a couple sure. we're going to see tonight and we'll uh, field some questions from some fans and things like that. But uh, real pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Eric. It's like I said, pleasure to be here. It's always awesome to be on your show. And uh, the Kramer corner is just something I've been watching a lot lately and, um, you know, having Dennis Berardi and Gary Kramer, those those were some really cool shows, there, really cool shows. It was fun for sure, getting to like get a, like a different aspect, like from the founding fathers, and you know, we all kind of go down those rabbit holes of studying all the facts and the folklore and that kind of stuff. Right. But uh, you know, getting to hear it from the founding fathers, you know, several of them was was quite cool. You know, things that yeah. I thought I was correct on some things I was like, no, I was out of line. Some things I knew. You know, it was kind of neat. Just like when you're talking about meeting Floyd Rose, you knew some things about <laughs> Floyd that even he didn't know about. Yeah. Right. But you, who, right. Who's, yeah, who are we to question, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, a, it's always amazing when you're, you know, sitting there talking to the man, so to speak, or like you said, the maker. And, and uh, you happen to know this little bit of information that they either forgot about or, or you know, or, or you learn it yourself. So that's always interesting. It's always a good time. So because I'm always learning stuff, too. I mean, every time I, you know, I, I do a show, I mean, I'm sure you think the same thing. I mean, you, you learn a lot from your viewers. Um Big and time. that's what it's always a continuous process for know. sure well some i don't think we've ever talked about this before but back at the several times i think you've been on my show two or three times over the years over the three years um mm -hmm. and you know we were on johnny show and dave show and stuff like that together a few different times as well many times um so i don't think people know the history of how far we go back so i want to kind of paint a little bit of a picture and then we're going to jump over to the chat say hi to a whole bunch of people and as i told rob off the air here i said i'm horrible for the chat so I'm usually about 15 sentences behind. So I'm going to try my very, very best to be uh, a guitar hack tonight. And I, when I say guitar hack, he's a good friend of mine in the chat. He's he's yeah. religiously good with his chat. I'm going to be, try to be uh, one tenth as good as he is tonight. But I want to paint a picture how far we go back. So we go back way before social media, way back before Facebook, and way back before MySpace. Now let's some of these people when we say MySpace are going to feel old. Way before MySpace, like I mean, it was our space. You know, we had the Van Halen mailing list, the VHML for us, us and the No. And to give you an idea of what the VHML was like, so you have an argument with somebody today on Facebook, you can say, hey, screw you. No, screw you. We had to wait a week to get that return. Remember, for the people that couldn't have high-speed internet, I mean, high-speed back then was 14.4 modem, you know, right. like dial-up. So you get in an argument with somebody, you'd have to wait a week for the response to get up to you. And if you were really lucky, I mean, because a lot of us were on that digest. You remember getting the email at the end yep. of the day where everyone's threads were in one, you know, big oh, yeah. list? So yep. we go back to that, and that was back in like the, I want to say 97-ish. Does that sound about right? Yeah, 96, 97. Uh, I still hear that old dial-up tone in the back of my head every once in a while. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> I know. I remember. Yeah. Sometimes I'm at someone's place and you hear a fax machine. What's a fax machine, right? But you hear that squawk and, and when you, yeah. you kind of get a, a little bit of a, a vein pops out of your forehead because there's good memories and bad memories from all those days. Right. Right. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. But that's the thing. Yeah. It went way back to these days and, and us Van Halen fans, there was, I don't know, a few hundred of us worldwide. I don't know exactly the, the number, but maybe 500, maybe more. Do you, do you remember the number? I don't remember the number, but it, boy, I'll tell you, it certainly wasn't anything like what it is now. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, my, 
I don't. Rem- I I wouldn't know the exact number, but I mean, I would, like I said, I would I would I would bet a paycheck that it's not even close to what it is. Now. No, like I, I'm thinking if it was over, if it was a thousand, I think that would even be a stretch, maybe. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But it was cool I, because you know all the people that we were interacting with. I remember even Valerie was you know when Eddie and Valerie were together. Right. You know, there's a lot of us that would get Christmas cards from Valerie. At, you know, and you know, yeah. happy you know Christmas to you guys and that kind of stuff it was yeah. very very cool. It was. It yeah. Was yeah. She was very active in those boards. I remember. So, so very cool. And what goes back, I think maybe even what supersedes how we met from there was the, you know, there again too, we, the websites back then were the only real connection we had to Van Halen. Van Halen right. didn't really even have an official website yet. You know, they, right. they kind of did, kind of didn't. This, this is how far it goes back. We had the Van Halen news desk, which was not, owned, not in its capacity that it is today. That was not owned by Jeff as it is today. It was owned by our friend Grant over in Australia we had my site, which I'm going to show you some screenshots, and I actually have them, which is very, very cool. And that's how yeah. you and myself and Scott Smith and yeah. and all the the gang, uh, yeah. Lou Cruz, Jerry, Jerry, Leica, Jerry, Leica Jerry. Leica and all guys, I think yeah. I have a screenshot of some of his stuff as well too, Jerry. Yeah. Um, that circle so big, and then there was Bill Broadway, uh, who bought my pre my purple PV Wolfgang, like you're the one you had, or you still have the yeah. purple one. I do, yeah. It's right on the wall. Okay. Yeah, I love that. That's that was one of Scott Smith's guitars. Yeah, oh. it's, uh, it's one of my babies. I miss. I've that had one. like three of them in my life. The same exact guitar, and I would always sell it for something else or to build something else. And uh, a, a few years ago, I said when I got that one, I said, "Okay, never again. This purple is staying." <laughs> well, the thing with me is, um, Bill bought bought it only because he wanted a match to his. He's got the uh, Ernie Ball Music Man, right? right. He wanted right. the complimentary model to go with that, and one of these days I'm gonna I'm gonna offer him a stupid amount of money, like maybe a thousand dollars more than I sold it for. For the sole fact that I know, like I sold it for a thousand bucks, right? You know, and that was a steal. I mean, right now that could go for sixteen, eighteen hundred bucks easily, oh, yeah. easily any day, uh, U.S. And I'll I'll offer him something good because I know how good that one played. And it's not like you can just walk into a music store, find another purple one that's used, same era, not gonna play the same. Right. I've told this story many times before where I've had sound guys where I'd be playing my black um, USA PV patent pending one. Right. And then I'd switch to the purple one. And the sound guy would say to me at the end of the show, he'd say, what did you what did you do there? Would you have some kind of EQ change? Would you do blah, blah, blah? I'm like, yeah. no, just guitar and just some nice wood, nice combo, right? right? Yep. So, yeah, I remember the black ones had a different tone than the... Uh, um, and the flame top, you know, uh, brighter colors. Because I've owned, I've owned a couple of ivories over the years, a couple of patent pendings, a few black ones, patent pendings, and a few purples, and then a ton of specials. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they all had. I, I do remember the black. Uh, I always would call it the humans being guitar. Yeah, I had guitar. the same one. Yeah, played '96 Nam show and and uh, also in the humans being video. Um, I remember that guitar always had kind of a. I wouldn't call it a darker, but a real bassier tone because it was a, it was completely basswood. Mm-hmm. And there is the you know the uh, um, the purples and the reds they have like a maple cap on them, so you you would you could pick up a little bit of some tonal differences, not good or bad, just a little bit different. Yep. You know? I was playing the black one actually, and I've got you saw my uh, amber hardtail I have as well too. Yep. I was playing both of those. Today. I was going through a bunch of my guitars, just restringing them, retuning them, and putting some of that uh, string lube under the new stuff I've been using a lot. And uh, I just like I hadn't played either of the two PVs in probably a good month, and I was like, "Oh right. man, it's just like a nice, comfortable pair of socks or a nice, new oh, brand, you know." Yeah. yeah, it's funny how a guitar, you know, and I mean, all my guitars, I would like to say, you know, play well and I, and, I, and I enjoy playing them because I do. But there's about three guitars out of the 32 that I have that are just they just have that magical feeling to them, and one of them is that new Music Man, you know, that new uh, uh, Amber. Quilt top BX, like you know what Eddie's was. It just has that magic feeling to it. You know what I mean? I know. It's. I think sometimes it's easier to go through your list of guitars. You can almost say, okay, well, I like this one, but I don't love this one. And then you can put it back on the shelf. And I'm not sure if you're like me, but sometimes I'll kind of move them out of position. You know, it's like it's like almost. It's kind of sad, you know, because they're kind of like you might hurt their feelings. But it's like I went through today. I went through a bunch of guitars. I went through the two PVs, like I told you, and they they they're like, okay, uh, thank you. You're just as good as the last time I played you. I yeah. I picked up my Yamaha Pacifica, um, and uh, it was perfectly in tune, and it's got that fat, um, almost like an Ibanez style neck on it, th- fat yeah. and thin. I yeah. what else I picked up the Kramer. I picked up my a couple of my Line Six guitars, and uh, just it just is like oh wow. And every guitar is so different. 
You know, right. like, like you've done a lot okay. of times on your show. I'm sure you pick up some guitars sometimes. You show people, okay, this is what I like about this one. This is what I like about this one. And yeah. each one has a nice little signature to it, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. And it's funny because I'll pick up a guitar that I don't play, um, you know, all the time. Maybe every couple of months I'll pick it up and with the change of the seasons, um, you know, especially in the winter time when it's a little bit more drier up in the guitar room. I'll pick a guitar up that just played amazing. You'd hit a chord, it would ring out beautiful, you know, like two months prior. And you hit it, and it's like, Wah, it's all fretting out and everything. I'm like, oh, come on. You know, and you got to truss rod. You got to make adjustments. You got to do this, raise the bridge, you know, whatever. It's, so it's it's uh, it's always a, uh, a never-ending battle. <laughs> it's a guessing game. I know. Uh, especially with those unfinished maple necks, you know. You and I are kind of somewhat, I mean, pretty much within the same climate zone, same, you know, you know, global area for the most yeah. part. And same thing, I, I agree with that as well, too. I should really have a humidifier here because um, I can feel it I, my, my hair. I can feel it my freaking hair. My hair is like static electricity right now. <laughs> but, yeah, you pick up the guitars, you got frets, gonna almost, you almost cut yourself on the frets. Right. If right. It's buzzing yeah. out and you're like, oh, man. And then, like you say, too, with the unfinished necks, that can be a blessing and a curse to you get into the, the summer months and they almost become like a sponge sometimes. Right, right. It goes the opposite, you know. And yep. It's funny. I was just out of Dave Nesdal's house a few weeks ago. We were out there, and I brought, you know, whenever I go out there, I bring a bunch of guitars, and we play, and we have a good time, and take pictures. And uh, he was going to be doing a little bit of work on a couple of my guitars, and uh, he had a couple of vintage nuts, Floyd Rose nuts he was going to put on. And, and I work on my own guitars mostly, but Dave just has, he's a little bit sharper when it comes to some of the fine-tuning things sure. that I make can't do so uh <laughs> i swear every single guitar i brought him he's like dude he's like i'm cutting myself on the frets here <laughs> so he ended up doing like 15 fret jobs you know on, on my guitar so but he definitely yeah. knows his stuff for sure that's the thing too i mean you know he's he's been doing it for so long you know and, and he's in a climate zone too where it's in new york yes. well actually is he still in new york is he in new york still yeah he's still in new york so we're only three and a half hours of three, well three three and a half hours depending on you know the, the traffic and everything but uh yeah it's the exact same thing so the weather we get here is he's basically getting the same thing so he goes to the same thing but you know you mentioned a humidifier and that is something i absolutely have to invest in um i keep meaning to do it and i always keep forgetting about it you well, know you, you know what to, to be honest with you um there's a question coming up here in a second i'm gonna jump to the chat in a second as well too we're gonna kind of go in reverse order <laughs> But Sandra yeah. Lee, as you know her, my, my better half here, people that know her as Nocturnal Butterfly in the chat, she does a lot of organic things like, you know, planting of tomatoes and like yeah. she does seeds all winter long. And then we plant them outside, uh, you know, actually right away. But she has right. a small humidifier. We got it from Amazon. And um, I'll share it with you off the air. I mean, it yeah. actually would be very, very beneficial to you for like around, I'm going to, I might have been between 40 and 80 bucks. You know, it's yeah. a very small yeah. one. It would be ideal for your guitar room, you know? Yeah. I even got a special spot for it. They have a little table right over there, and it would be perfect, you know, because it kind of blows into the room this way. Exactly. Um, it, it would just make a big difference on the necks and, you know, and, and, and the, the fret wire sticking out. Yep. I mean, in the, in the summertime, it goes away. I mean, it, so it, it does come back around. Yeah. But it is kind of a nuisance, you know, in that time of the year when you want to play the guitar because you have to make all these different adjustments and things. So. Yeah, I'd rather not have to do that if I don't have to, right? Exactly. Right. Yeah, just give it just a tiny bit of moisture. The only thing you're going to find that's a bit of a nuisance is you're going to you're going to see some of your posters hanging on your wall. They're going to feel a little bit more. They're going to feel a little different. Yeah. Yeah. Not like you're saturating them, but there's a, there's a different climate change in the room. Right. Yeah. Yep. So there's Absolutely. there's a question that if she's got it correct, and I'm going to come back to the chat. We're going to circle back with someone named JG, uh, JJ asks, uh, "What's better? What's a better feeling, the EVH neck or the Music Man PV or Fender?" That's a broad question. So I guess there's probably no better. But what what are your thoughts? And I'll share mine too. You know, I mean, a question. That's a good question. It's a great question, and 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 it's it, uh, you know, unfortunately, it's a question that a lot of people that would be looking to purchase an EVH style guitar would have. You know, what's the best? What's the best music man? What's the best PV, EVH, you know, Kramers, whatever. Um, what what neck feels the best? Well, you just said it. It's a, in my opinion, this is nothing more than my opinion. It It's kind of like asking somebody, what tastes better, strawberry or vanilla ice cream? I know. It's a, it's a matter of preference. Um, you know, I, I I like them all. I, I love the feel of the, of the PV necks. They're a little bit more fatter mm -hmm. for me. Um, that's not a bad thing. Um, and I love the feeling of the music man necks. They are just, those are just magical to me, the, the Ernie Ball music mans and the EVH is especially the, the ebony ones. I mean, they're just great. And, you know, I go back and forth. 
for a couple of months, I'll be in a music man mode, and I just love that neck, and 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 I, you know, and I'll play it all the time, and I just, I, you know, the action is perfect because I like a nice low action, um, and then I'll, you know, then I'll put it down a month or two later, a few weeks depending what it is, and I'll pick up a PV. I'm like, oh, okay, that's a little different, you know, and I'll play that for a little while, and 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 I love the feel of that neck, and the same thing with the EVHs. So I'll, I kind of go up and down. So I, I would just say, I mean, you can't go wrong with any of them. That's right. Okay? Uh, I mean, if I had to pick the neck that if somebody forced forced me to it, I would probably say if I could only choose one guitar based off the feel of the neck, I would probably pick a Music Man, an EVH, just because that, that that's just I guess I would have to say that if somebody made me say it. But sure, but I definitely go up and down. Very fair analogy. But how how would you think of this? And this is what I think. I, I personally think this. The guitars don't change. We we change. Right. It's our mood that day. We got we got right. a pay raise at work, or you know, we saw a cool movie last night that really inspired us. We yeah. watched Motley Crue and we're pumped. We watched the new Van Halen footage that's released from yeah. '79, stuff like that. Every yeah. our moods change every day, and all of a sudden, you know, all of a sudden, this guitar that maybe made us struggle a little bit now we're flying on it. I think it's our yeah. moods that change. I, absolutely. You know, it's funny because uh, <laughs> I just watched The Dirt the other night. Mm -hmm. you know, I just watched that. I actually have seen it twice now and I loved it. And of course, first thing I want to do is call my girlfriend. Hey, come on over. I need to see you now. <laughs> I'm joking. But, uh, you know, but it's funny because I got up this morning and I'm driving my daughter to school and I'm like, oh, I want to put some Motley Crue on. I want to hear Dr. Feelgood, you know, and it's because you're just in that mood, you know. Yep. Uh, or like you said, uh, I was watching the, the 79 footage that was just released. I mean, we've seen it before. It's mm -hmm. been out. Of course. But, it was officially released pretty much on the news desk. And, you know, all of a sudden I'm like, whoa, you know, that's so cool. You know, he's playing the Dragon Snake guitar. And, um, oh, I got to build one of those now, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> never ending, you know. Let me Thank say, you, Eddie Van Halen, for emptying my checkbook. For I know, week. I know. Let me ask you this. When you watched the Dirt movie, did you go out, Did you play a couple of Motley Crue riffs on the guitar? I did. I did. Oh, yeah, I there did. you go. Yeah. That's pretty yeah, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, girls, girls, girls. I was playing that one uh, the, uh, this morning. You know, it's just, it's just a, it's just all you know, power chord stuff. Oh, of it's course. Pretty, and you know, it's it's, it's so funny. You, you look at Mick Mars, and I mean, you know, I I want to put Mick Mars in that same category. Maybe I, I don't dare say a step above Ace Frehley. I don't want to say any below Ace Frehley, but a kind of a limited vocabulary, somewhat. And I mean that with right. the utmost respect, because sure. there's, there's even some things by Mick Myers. I'll say it right now. I can't play like, you know, you think these solos are so easy and I probably would fake, I would, I would mess them up, you know, but it's a more of a limited vocabulary, but you look at some of these guys that have these limited vocabularies and you try to duplicate them and you can't, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, I mean, I look at a guitarist like you and I, you know, when I watch you play, I mean, you're a phenomenal guitarist. I mean, you just, you're very clean the way you play. You're very fast. You have incredible skill. Thank you. Um, uh, you know, and it's funny because when you look at, when you look at other guitarists, like you said, that maybe don't have as much of a vocabulary, um, it's kind of like that, uh, you know, it's kind of like that saying we have in martial arts, you know, I, I fear the guy that, um, uh, only knows two kicks okay. versus the one that knows 10 kicks. Because even though he only knows those two kicks, he probably does them perfectly. Oh, you know? yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, because cause it's just, you know, kind of, I mean, it's, it's it's not necessarily a true statement all around, but I know what you mean. It's it's some of these guys, they may only have, or I should say players, I shouldn't say guys. Right. So players, they may only have a, a few chords or a few chops or be able to play in different boxes and, you know, a couple modes, whatever it is, but but they pretty much, even though they've kind of pigeonholed themselves into that one little realm, they're so good at it because they understand that little realm so much, and they and, and, and they can kind of dance all over the place with it. Whereas maybe somebody else who maybe understands a lot of them, they haven't mastered those particular. You know what I'm saying? I guess I do. I do 100. percent Yeah, you you kind of own your specialty, right? So it's a it's like a you right. know I, I can it's like the people that can go to a restaurant and they can like a foreign restaurant like overseas and they can order off the menu. That's all they need to really really do. Where's uh, what can I order to, and where's your bathroom at? Yeah, as long as you can speak that language. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, here here is another question here too. And I'm going to jump back to the chat. These are being sent to me by text, so which means I've missed them. Uh, so Alley Cat, thinking about getting an Ibanez RG450, nice guitar, and adding a Tessie Switch, thoughts, advice. Okay, so number one, we're both familiar with Tessie Switch. We both recommend them. You've got them in your guitars. Yep. Uh, Rob makes awesome products. So, I mean, forget about the guitar. Your Ibanez RG450, um, a decent guitar. I had a 750. I love the Ibanez guitars. 
but the Tessie switch, you can stick that switch in any guitar, and I will give my full blown testimonial. I don't even have a Tessie switch. I've got a, I've got another one here, but I know his product. You tell me on Tessie. What would you recommend on on his product? I mean, I, I would recommend pretty much anything. I mean, the only I've I've got two of the kill switches, you know, and uh, my my Wolfgangs, uh, and uh, and they just work flawlessly. I mean, I would I would absolutely recommend the uh, the kill switches. Um, they come with the LED indicators and all yeah. the cool stuff. Stuff, which I think is really cool. I don't have any of those, but I have yet to hear any bad reviews on any of, of uh, Rob's stuff. And I've speak. heard positive feedback with his, uh, and this is not, I'm not endorsed, I'm not promoting them, I'm just giving you honest feedback. He'll go the extra mile with like w- diagrams yeah. and support, all that kind of stuff. So I can't say enough about that. So Alley Cat, if that's, a, I mean, that's two of us saying get the product and uh, reach out to him, ask some pre-sales questions before you buy, yeah. and I'm sure you'll be pleasantly impressed. So let's say hi to a whole bunch of people. Fender Guru is here saying, Rob is the man. RJ the Mad One is here. Terry's GG&G. Uh, Guitar Hack, who I mentioned earlier, we are watching his stream earlier. He had a great stream just before ours. Gary Holt is here. Uh, Ladybug is here. Uh, let me see here. Let's continue down. Uh, Will Varela is here. Frank C. Guitarded, which is Randall. A lot of people you'll know from the community as well, too. Scott Connor. Um, yep. let me see here. I scroll down a little bit further. Um, lots of their regulars trying to get Carlos Santa. Nice to see you, my friend, Canadian friend here. And he's a, um, uh, a lefty Wolfgang player. Uh, wow. and, and obviously cool. they don't have a lot of options, right? They're slowly right. getting a few. So nice to see that. And, uh, some Kramer love coming that way soon too, as well too. in the lefties, uh, Denny Allen, Will Varela. Uh, let me see. Brian Cote, another, um, another Canadian fellow, uh, friend of mine, a good player. I'm not sure if you know him. He's great. He's probably joined your channel a few times. I've uh, heard the name. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. He's great. Uh, bass player slash guitar player slash uh, multimedia producer. Really cool guy. Brad awesome. Miller is here, uh, very influential in the Line 6 Helix community. Let me see Wally in the box, Ron Limber, and nice to see you here. Let me see you continue down. I'm actually not doing too, too bad. R2R3 is here. Yeah, I, I think you know him. Let me oh, see yeah. here. Um, let me see, almost down to the bottom. Jason McDermott is here. Thank you very much for joining us. Jason, appreciate that. Hey, Jason, how are you? Motor City Axman. Hello, everyone, he says. Thank you for joining us. Cody Gustafsson. Hey, guys. Todd Graff. Guitardo. Uh, my dial-up was uphill both ways back in the day. I know. I know. <laughs> you remember just Literally, to log I, in? Okay, you're verifying username, verifying password. Oh man, yeah. So I know. I know. I but I, you know, it's it, it was a blessing. It was a blessing, wasn't it? We didn't know any better. I know. Then, so it, it was cool. I mean, we had internet, you know, and you had this. All of a sudden, you had this method of going online and finding information and if you had something that you had a passion about like a van halen or a guitar or it was whatever there. It is, you could you could finally start seeing it you know instantaneously i know well, not quite instantaneously but, but yeah. a lot quicker than yeah <laughs> it's like you're waiting for a picture of Eddie and you're like chick, chick, yeah chick, like that's in about 15 minutes oh yeah it would take forever to load you know then sometimes it would just stop and sit yeah. there and say, come on <laughs> who, who are we kidding we weren't looking at pictures of eddie back then but well maybe a few of them but yeah, same idea them. whatever we were waiting for it was always waiting <laughs> like that and all of a sudden it would get to the halfway rate to get to the point where you're waiting for all of a sudden corrupt data and then you lost yeah, yeah I oh, know. man mom picks up the phone right and then like, right. Mom, exactly. the phone. I'm for, you know why is yeah. that screeching why is that screeching on the phone uh, let me see here. Zach Thong is here. Will Varela. Absolute Mayhem is here. Thomas Santiago. Nice to see you. Uh, let me see here. I'm going to uh, I'm going to highlight right there just for a quick second. And I want to mention, too, that's so funny because, you know, we've kind of told at the beginning of the story here, at the beginning of the show, how, you know, we've known each other for half of our lives, but we've only met for the very, very first time. Just like you were saying on Ben Coombe's show the other night, you know, you right. met Ben for the first time at NAMM, and that was the first time, too. And, I mean, I would have really have loved to had more time to spend, like, uh, EVH booth was probably the third booth I hit. Yeah. I, had, I had about six or eight booths that I was um, scheduled to shoot at. And EVH obviously was one of them because I, I'm still with the EVH guys as an artist. But I only had about 15 minutes literally to be there and be at the next booth. So I was there. Fortunately, you were there at the time. I was able to get a picture with you before we shot. Then Junior did his interview with yeah. Matt. And it was so freaking fast paced that I didn't get a chance to, to touch or hold the shark. And fortunately, I was, I was, you know, we're finishing up. We're, okay, thanks a lot. We're done. And I look over and there's Tommy Coletti from the music zoo. I yeah. got my camera on him and I'm like, Tommy. And I hadn't actually met him yet. You know, we'd worked together in the past. Right. And, and uh, there he was. So I was guy. Yeah, I was filming him a little bit. And that was my only experience with a shark. And then I was like, okay, got to go. And we were off to the next booth. But it was so awesome to finally spend at least a few minutes with you. And, you know, we're surrounded by the stuff that we love. 
You know, it is, and that's that's one of the nicest things about going to these shows is, is the people, meeting the people. You know, I only wish we had a little bit more time to spend with these guys and these 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 gals and, you know, the folks we want to see. Yourself, uh, Johnny Bean was another one. I've known Johnny for over 20 years, and the first time I've ever met him, physically met him, you know, and uh, so that was a great uh, a great thing. And, you know, Caleb and... And all the, I mean, all these guys, you know, all, all, all the friends that I have, you know, that are into the stuff that could make it. It was so nice to, to see these guys and, and, and be able to spend time with them. But it, yeah, it was absolutely nice to meet you. Um, and also Junior as well. I mean, just a great kid. Um, very, just, just reminds me of Connor, my son, just a very yeah. well polite you know, just upbeat kid, you know, and you guys did a great job bringing them up, man. And I say that because I'm a father too, but it's nice to finally meet these people that you've been talking to and reading about and watching on YouTube and having the same passion, you know, that uh, together that we've all had for all these years. It's just nice. Like I said, I only wished we had more time to all hang out, you know? I mean, that's the part that just is too bad. I know. But, as I was next year. <laughs> That's right. And I, I've been the same way with you, too. I, I've lived through you watching your boy grow up. And I mean, he went from like a little boy to <laughs> a massive yeah. football player, you know, pretty yeah. much overnight. And I mean, kind of like the three feet taller than you. You know, I've, oh, yeah. I've watched yeah, him grow I'm up. I'm as only 5'8", and he, he looks just like me, but he's like, he's six four now. So he's he's a monster, you know. So he's cool. Six, yeah. It is, it is cool because, I mean, time goes by so freaking fast. I mean, like we think, you know, we think months and it's been years and we watch each other kids uh, grow up. But, um, you know, it was very, very cool to actually physically meet. And here's here's a kind of a fact that you may not know. You may not know this, but you mentioned Johnny Bean. And I don't remember the exact time, but it would be back around around the inception of eBay. When eBay first yeah. took off, and I think that was around 97, 98-ish. And that, yeah. if we want to talk Van Halen terms, we always like to try to reference Van Halen terms. So we're talking Van Halen 3, right? Van Halen right. 3 tour. Uh, around that era, I had a bunch of different, I was selling off some Kramer parts here and there. And I had, you know, you can ask Johnny because uh, you talk to him a lot. I think it was a striped, a striped headstock. It was a rosewood yeah. neck. I know that for sure. I was selling a rosewood yeah. neck. And I think it was a striped one I took off of a striker or a focus or something. Yeah. And then he bought it. And then and then when he, you know, you get to contact who the person you're shipping to and says Johnny Bean. And I'm like, that name sounds familiar. I think I've seen him through the Van Halen circle of the internet or something. Because yeah. you know, he wasn't doing his YouTube thing. We didn't have YouTube right yet. Right. right. But the name sounded familiar. And sure enough, I think that was our first real introduction to one another is through selling a guitar. Yeah. So here, And then oh, look, yeah. at, look at now today, right? We're all doing kind of the same things. Yeah, I mean, it was that's. I met Johnny through uh, the Van Halen trading list. Yep, VH, VH trading. Yep. Yeah, because I used to, you know, we used to trade all the all the live recordings, and and I, you know, I still have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of those things, and that's where I first met Johnny, and then, you know, on the VH links and you know, Unchained World, which was yours. I mean, those those were just those were just magical. I still have a printout of a, a whole bunch of pages from Unchained World. Black and white copies, you know, I was at work one night back in 96 and I want to print all these pictures out of Scott Smith's guitars and Jerry's and, you know, uh, um, Bill Broadway's guitar. I mean, all these yeah. guys. Yeah, I'll that was so cool. There's a question coming up, I'll ask you in a second. And since you mentioned that, I'm going to show a little bit of a gallery. Now, you won't see this on yeah. the screen, but while this gallery is on the screen, I'll give a little bit of people some foreshadowing about that. Um, yeah. So let, let me pop that on for a second. I think I think we got it queued up. Okay, so this was back in like 1996 through 1998. This was my old website, Eddie Van Halen's Unchained World. It was Unchained World 2. And I even owned back in the day, believe it or not, EVH5150.com. I'd give anything to have that domain name today. But this was one of the the few websites. So there's my trading list that's coming on the screen. We had this massive trading list. That's okay. If you got this, I'll trade you this for that, blah, blah, blah. We might see yeah. Scott Smith's collection. There's the Van Halen bootlegs. So that's talking about the bootlegs on the screen here as well, too. Uh, there, we had the EVH shoes before Eddie even made the shoes. It wasn't us making them, but somebody was making them, and they didn't really condemn them, so they were out there talking about right. how to get Eddie's tone. That's on the screen now as well. Let me see what else we got here. I got about six or seven slides. Scott Smith's collection. So I had about eight to ten guys back in the day that had all these really cool collections. Now, Scott was always the biggest. We've got yeah. Photo Gallery. We had Lou Kruska with the uh, Pit collection. Oh. Yes, yeah. I remember Lou. And I haven't uh, caught up with him on, there it is right now on the screen right now too. So he had them all indexed by year, by tour, by, you know, variants and all that kind of stuff. It was so very, very, very cool. But, yeah. um, you, you know, when we talk about that, when you say you were printing off things, with the first time I met Van Halen would be in 1998. 
And uh, when I uh, so I I met Scotty Ross before I met the entire band. And Scotty Ross is right there, got his hand out. You know, he's like kind of like the uh, you know the the front man to to the band. I reach out my hand and I said hi, Eric Broadbent. And he didn't remember my whole website, but he remember he goes, oh, Unchained, Unchained. He didn't know the whole thing, but he at least he remembered that part. And he goes, we've got some things. We printed off some stuff, just like you had said. And I was like, holy yeah. crap. Yeah, that's so cool. And I think a big, I think a big uh, proponent of that was Valerie at the time. Yes. She was very active in the, um, on the mailing list world and those types of sites. So she was, Eddie and Al never really spent a lot of time on, on the computer back in those days. I mean, if you listen to the, uh, the Australian interview after Dave left, and they're interviewing Al and, and Eddie, you know, Al actually says, you know, all these people spend so much time on computers and, you know, it's such a waste of time. You know, it's like, you know, it, it was, I, I was just hearing that on the way to work the other day. I was listening to an old interview and, uh, but Valerie was, she would always communicate to those guys what was going on. And, you know, so it was kind of neat. Remember how she would jump in and do, like, like a good wife would, you know what I mean? Jump in like someone would say something bad yeah. about Van Halen. Oh my God, you didn't stand a chance. Oh yeah, yeah. She would she would cut you off at the knees or whatever. Yeah, I know. It was pretty cool. Uh, so Will, I'm not sure if his last name. Will asked. I wanted to know if the guitar on Rob's left, the white and black stripes. Um, so I'm uh, let me. Oh, probably when I went to the when I went to the large green, is it build plus? What are the specs in that one? So let's. I I know about that one. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about this one. Yeah. Yeah. This is the uh, this is the EVH Rude. This isn't a Kramer, but uh, um, it, it's it's kind of um, pre Kramer. You can kind of tell. You know, with the with the with the uh, the rear loaded stuff. You know, what there was no pick guard. This was the direction Eddie was going in. This is a two inch thick uh, body. Very thick. Like Eddie's was yet, and it's I believe it's uh, uh, I think it's uh, I think it's ash. I think this one is, and uh, it's a fair warning replica. They call this the weird shapes rude guitar, and if you take the neck off underneath in the neck pocket, it says EVH rude. Uh, and that was just the name that Eddie gave this body. It was basically one of the guitars they would play Unchained on. Um, he had this one, and then he had another one that was similar to it, the Circles guitar. And there was basically just a, a Strat body. It was made by, I think, Boogie Bodies had, had put it together for him. It had a couple of different necks on them at the time. But this was one of the necks that I he had on there in the Fair Warning Tour. It's a Dan Electro style neck. Yep. Uh, tilt back, uh, kind of an odd... Uh, configuration, um, but this neck also was on the Frankenstrat um, uh, for the Starfleet project and also yeah. uh, warm-ups of the US Festival. Now that looks like a three-piece headstock, is it? Uh, actually, it is, and it's it's one piece. It's just uh, I I took some stain and, oh. and stained it in the middle to make it look more like Eddie's. Okay, uh, didn't have that, so I did the stain job on it so to make it look like a three-piece. Okay, but he had this thing with these. He was using the Floyd Roses back then. And, uh, you know, 1981, but the sound of the Floyds to his taste back then was very thin. So the reason that's why he did the, had the two inch body, the two inch thick body made up because he thought that having that much extra wood would give more, you know, resonance for the bridge. Um, so that was one of the reasons why he did that. It's a really cool paint job. Like I said, they call it the weird shapes and the back of it looks like this. Mm -hmm. And this guitar was actually painted by Jerry Leica. As a matter of fact. Oh, very cool. Yeah. And I've done a handful of these myself over the years, but, you know, it's always nice to have, you know, paint jobs and guitars by your heroes. So, uh, you know, this is cool. So it's a DiMarzio Super Distortion. Uh, it's got a speed knob, uh, original Floyd Rose. It has a D tune on it. Obviously, that didn't have it back in those days. Yeah. But um, shallower tuners and um, upside down input jack, because that's yep. what Eddie was doing back then. <laughs> <laughs> Everything episode. unorthodox. It's oh, yeah, absolutely. I got to meet Jerry that's in person. Guitar. I got to meet Jerry in person for the first time about a year ago, too, over in Michigan, where he where his home, where he resides. We went yeah, to great um, guy. I forget the name of the club. What's the, what's the name of the freaking club there? Um, oh, I'm gonna forget the name of it. Seduce played there, and you know, an old you know '80s an '80s band for sure. And yep. uh, got to got to meet him in person as well, too. And for someone, he's not a guitar player; he's a drummer, and right. he does some of the best crafting on guitars. But I guess that question was from Will Varela. So that Will Varela is one of our regulars. Um, yeah. And so, and Todd is also, uh, Soda Pop's asking if it's heavy. I imagine it would be somewhat heavy. It is heavy. It, it really is. I mean, and, you know, again, um, these two guitars are also replicas. Um, um, the Rasta guitar and the, uh, the Circles guitar, mm -hmm. um, chain guitar. These were actually the same guitar. Mm -hmm. It started out in the Circles and then was painted to the Rasta style. Um, but this also was a two-inch thick 
uh, guitar. My replicas are not. Um, that one is, but these are basic, you know, um, basic width for the Strat bodies. But uh, yeah, he was he was really big into the um, in the boogie bodies um, back then, uh, making thick guitars. But they didn't last very long because he just he, he said they were very heavy. Mm -hmm. And if you watched Weasel Zappa's um, interview a few months ago on um, Norm's Rare Guitars, they, you know, he's showing off the, the Rasta, and they're like, oh, this thing's heavy as hell, you know? Um, so I don't think Eddie really liked it um, because of the weight. Yeah. And, yeah. I, I don't want to put Scott on the spot here, and, and, I, and I certainly don't want to quote anything that he said or not said, but I, I think I'm correct on this, and it could have been something you've talked about in the past when your shows are really phenomenal, by the way. Um, Thank you. But I think even Eddie doubted the fact that the Circles guitar w became the Rasta. He said, no, 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 no. And Scott says, no, look, I've got photos here looking at this angle, and you're seeing through the tape, and you can see certain patterns or whatever. Is that correct, or am I crazy? No, it's true. Yeah, I've heard that as well. Yep, I've heard that as well. And, you know, it brings up a good point. I mean, you know, to, to guys like us, to people like us that collect this stuff and, and, and we have a passion for building it, we've been into it for so many years. I mean, you show us a Van Halen striped guitar and we're like, oh, yeah, that was the backup 5150 guitar on, you know, uh, the 5150 tour or whatever. Or, you know, that's the 918V or whatever. We pick up on that stuff because it's, it's just stuff that we, you know, we're very privy to. And uh, if you asked Eddie about a lot of those, He'd probably say, "Huh, I don't even remember that." You know, he I mean, he may remember those, a couple of those. I mean, the fifty-one fifty, the eighty-fours, obviously, but a lot of those guitars, I think he's forgotten about. I mean, he tried to throw throw us for some curveballs back in the day, but I, you know, he's he, the guy's had so many guitars and played so many shows. I mean, he can't remember all that stuff. I mean, nobody could. I agree, hundred percent. Because I was coming on one of your recent live streams. I think it was the one we were playing the Steinberger, which was really really cool. Give him some history on that. And I'd comment, great, someone uh, was asking some questions, and I said, you know, that exact same thing. I said, you know, sure, Eddie will let, want us to throw, he want to throw a curve because you know, back in the day, he wanted to keep his thing, his thing. Right. But after all these interviews, I mean, I, I would love to know the actual. I would love to know someone actually to tell us how many interviews Eddie has done. I don't think anyone in our circle can even say the number because it's stupid. You it's know? stupid number, and, and there's still interviews out there that that are lost on surface. So, that's right. So yeah, I mean. We could, track everything we have and we probably would still be an inaccurate number that's right so all those numbers we'll say thousands of interviews eventually you know like i mean honestly let, let's use ourselves as examples rob do you remember what you did for the tepa solder you used back in 1997 like i don't know i think i went to radio shack i think it was it was the cheapest yeah. one i could find you know blah 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 you know we we just lose that shit right right yeah. and when you know if we were in the limelight you know back in those days and people were you know, watching us do that stuff, and we were famous for doing it, um, and we, you know, it made it big like a Van Halen did, or an Eddie in this case, you know, people would remember, they'd be telling us exactly what kind of solder we used, you know, because they'd be replicating it, but it, it, it's just, it, you know, Eddie was never one, to my knowledge, that he, he never sat around listening to his old music, he never sat around listening to his old albums, he was always creating new music, he was always building new guitars, and, you know, yeah, he was with Kramer for all those years, and then he was with Music Man for five years, and then PV, and then now EVH. And, I, you know, he still, I, I still believe that he'll pick up a, one of the Kramers, probably the 5150, because that's right at arm's length in the studio. Mm -hmm. um, but there's so many guitars that have come and gone, and, you know, they're in hard rock cafes, and, you know, people, he's given so many guitars away, he couldn't remember what you know, was that was like, and the same exact thing with Paul Unker, you know, a few years ago when we were out visiting Paul. You know, here we are talking to Paul about, you know, the, the Neptune Kramer, you know, that Eddie sprayed all the blotches on, you That's know. That's beautiful, and, by the way. And, and Paul's like, oh, yeah, I think I remember, yeah, I remember that guitar, you know, and he's, and you kind of, you know, uh, kind of just, you know, jolt their memory a little bit, and all of a sudden, you know, he remembers a couple of stories, but this isn't stuff that these guys just sit around thinking about like we do, you know. I know. Or else I do, you know. We're jonesing over it, but it, like they kind of sometimes want to let that that stuff go. It's been forever, right? Right, right. It's exactly. like if, you know, if people ask you about what you did it today at work, and whether it's training with firearms or things like that too, you might right. remember a bit of it, or maybe something you did last month or a special seminar, but you can't right. remember all the details. But maybe there's some some guy that a guy or girl that was there. That was a prize student, and they remembered you verbatim what you did. No, you did this, Rob. You did this. I'm like, oh, maybe I did, right? Yeah, 
Oh yeah, I mean, I always remember the pretty girl students I have. I don't remember the guys. <laughs> of course, it's funny, you know. It's 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 actually funny. I was in the grocery store with my daughter last week, and this guy comes up to me, and I didn't even recognize him. I had no idea. He's Rob. How you doing? Oh man, I, you know, I I haven't seen you in a few years. That class you gave me, you know, on on the tactical class was amazing, and you know, you don't want to seem like a jerk. I'm like, oh great, glad you liked it, and uh, nice to see you. Uh, um, uh, yup. Yeah. So anyways, you know, you know I, just, I had no idea who he was, let alone his name. And, you know, and, and you feel kind of bad, but I mean, I've had so many people come take these classes from me over the years. And I remember a lot of them, of course, but some of them, I just don't. And, yeah. you know, I think a lot of it would, you could take that and, you know, relate that to Eddie. And, you know, I mean, uh, what was it, uh, Sammy doesn't even remember what uh, what tour uh, Seventh Seal was on. He think he was on uh, one of the interviews I was watching on YouTube, and someone was t- talking about uh, Seventh Seal, and Sammy was like, "Oh yeah, that was off the Fern Lawful album." And he's like, "No, that was off the Balance album." <laughs> you know, it's like maybe a bit too much tequila, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. It's funny, I could just picture you, you know, you're at a firearm training session and like you, you meet some girl after the fact and, and like you're the one that failed this, the safety training, uh, the, the, you know, you didn't even know where the safety was in a gun. You almost shot me, but what are you doing for dinner tonight? Exactly. Yeah. We can forget about all this. That's right. Uh, we can forget about it. You didn't kill me. So we're, we're good. We can square it all away. Yeah, it's still alive. Yeah. Let's, let's go back and say hi to a bunch more people in the chat for sure. Uh, let me see here. So we answered the question for Will. Uh, a lot of people talking amongst themselves, which is always uh, pleasurable for sure. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, Scott Connor talking about Stevie Salas. Um, and Nocturnal has your link to your YouTube channel. And I do highly, highly, highly encourage people to check that out because it's very, very informative. Uh, okay. I want people to subscribe to you for sure. I mean, a lot, probably a lot of people that are watching right now already are a subscriber. But if they're not, check it out for sure. Alex Radford is here. Says, hey, hey, Thanks. everyone. Um, and these may be some people that are your, some of your friends as well, too. Some of them sound like they're new here. Uh, yep. Let me see here. Continue down a little bit more. Um, okay, so, yeah, Will Varela, I see his question. I, I, I'm not kidding when I say I'm 10 minutes behind in the chat. That's uh, <laughs> I, I want to I find a way to build a higher guitar hack to come in and, uh, and, and be kind of in the studio here and help me read some questions. Uh, right. So, yeah, we talk. Okay, I, I'm, just, I'm totally embarrassed at this point now with the amount of questions I'm behind on. But let's jump over to, like, actually, we can kind of maybe redeem myself a little bit and talk sure. about the very, very, very first time you decided to either get out some electrical tape, which is, I think, what I did first, you know, to practice my training wheels on a guitar and putting some stripes on a guitar. I think I had a Hondo or a Court guitar. It was a white guitar, yeah. and I put black tape on it. But when was the first time you striped a guitar? Do you remember it, and how did that experience go? I do remember it. Um, <clears throat> uh I, I was kind of a late bloomer with starting guitar, and I think I, I, I might have mentioned this before in one of the other shows, but uh, uh, electric guitar was always something, electric guitar was always something that I wanted to play as a kid. I was always fascinated by that sound, and, you know, I mean, I grew up listening to, you know, uh, Quiet Riot and, you know, Men at Work and ACDC, Van Halen. I grew up listening to all those bands, and I always had, you know, even like bands like Rod Stewart, you know, after the disco phase kind of, uh, he got out of that. Um, and I always loved the sound of the electric guitar. I always had a passion for it. And I always wanted to learn how to play. Um, unfortunately, I never got around to it until I was 20. Uh, it was 1996. So I was, uh, I was, I was 23. And uh, yeah, I was 23 years old. And because I mean, martial arts and all that stuff was always my focus when I was in my younger years. And, and I was always a huge Van Halen fan. But in 1996, I finally decided I wanted to learn how to play guitar, and it was absolutely 100% Eddie Van Halen driven. Nice. I seen him in the Balance tour, and I was just like, "Whoa!" You know, it was the first concert I'd seen Van Halen, and it was Balance. I, I mean, I listened to all the albums way back from you know Women and Children first, but I finally saw him in Balance, and I was like, "Just the sound was just like, whoa, that is incredible." So you know, like I said, the next year I finally said, "Okay, you know, time to um, learn how to play guitar." Well, I was dating my ex-wife at the time, <clears throat> and uh, for Christmas she bought me an electric guitar with a little, a little Marshall practice amp, and it was a uh, black and white. Um, it was a black body with a white pickguard, um, Fernandez Strat. Okay, nice. Right. It wasn't a bad guitar. It was it, it was a it was a good little guitar. I mean, I think it was only like a couple hundred bucks, but I mean, it played good. It didn't have a Floyd on it or anything, but I didn't know any better. So I started taking lessons, and uh, right off the bat, teach me how to play Van Halen. I want to learn how to play. You know, <laughs> and I, 
it was, you know, you really got me. I got those first chords down and they talk about love and all that stuff. Um, so I took lessons for about a year, but about two months into the lessons, <clears throat> I'm like, man, I want to, I want to strike this thing because I had seen, uh, your, your page Unchained world. And I'm looking at Scott Smith's guitars and I was always a massive, uh, uh, you know, uh, Van Halen striped guitar fan. So I obviously wanted to do that. And, um, I had no idea how to do it, but here, all of a sudden here, I'm looking at Scott Smith's collection and Jerry's and everybody, you know, Lou's, Lou Cruz guitars. And I'm like, well, this is insane. So I was able to get a hold of Scott Smith. And I just asked him, I said, uh, you know, through email, which is when I first met him also back in 96. Um, a very dear friend of mine to this day. We talk almost every week. And uh, he kind of told me how to do it. And, and of course, Live Without a Net was always our show. So this was my favorite guitar. You know, the 5150 was, this was just a magical guitar. Did and, you, uh, show that again. Yeah. No, 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 no. You're not getting off the hook that easy. Put that back on the screen. <laughs> yeah, this is my 5150. Uh, uh, Chris Hubbard painted this. It's it's right down. It's even got the wood grain in the body, right where on the wear marks and uh, all the extra holes from all Ed's uh, shenanigans and uh, stuff that he's drilled in there. Chris is amazing. I mean, amazing. Just an absolute uh, uh, piece of beauty. It really is. Um, it's got I, the clean neck because, you know, it was clean. Yep. Uh, it's seventh tuning one, uh, head, uh, seventh tuning peg version with a fake crack of the headstock. I was going to ask uh, you, so is that a fake crack or did they physically crack it and re-glue it? No, it's a fake crack. Gotcha. It's done with an exacto knife, you can see, but it looks so, you know, it looks good. Have the shallower uh, double uh, double tab tuner on the end, the one they uh, uh, added, and then move the godo down here at the seventh position. And uh, yeah, just a great guitar. This this thing is just oh, it's just amazing. It's one. Of, it's probably my favorite guitar. Even has the right uh, serial number on the yeah. on the plate. That's B four one two nine. So <laughs> I like the fact that it's a fake crack as well too, because some some people may go to the extreme to physically break it and put it back on, but right. And it's not, you hear you probably hear this a lot as well too in your community and and Dave Nesdal. I think I even heard Dave's in the chat. So Dave Nesdal, nice to have you here on the program. Um, What's up, buddy? Yeah, Nocturnal just sent me a text message as well too. But you know, the, a lot of the times, I mean, we can put these guitars on the wall and hang them, but I want to play them. And so let's right. say says, well, Eddie didn't have a, a Floyd Rose on the black and white stripe guitar, or it didn't have this whatever. Well, you know, yeah, that's true. But I want to play the guitar, and I want to play the way I play. I'm right. having the guitar because I love the man, but I want to still play. So, and right. I mean the clean neck. I would want the clean neck. I think myself right. as well too, because I'm kind of crazy that way. And Nocturnal Butterfly yeah. would say this as well too. I uh, well, she's 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 my Achilles heel because she's always clean your guitar, clean your guitar, right? And I'm keeping my guitar as clean, and there's nothing wrong with that. So, what are your thoughts on dividing the line between being authentic and being a guitar that I want to play? Well, first off, um, I think they're both, for me personally, I mean, I'm not a professional guitarist like you are. Um, I mean, I, I can play. Dude, and you're I, fantastic. And what I do, but for me, playability is just as important as as um, <laughs> lookability, if that's, a, you yep. know, or believability, I should say. I want the guitar to play. Um, so I, when I build a guitar, I try to purchase the best equipment. I'll get the Musicraft necks. I'll get the Chris Lock bodies. I'll get, but this one's a Butala neck. You know, I mean, it's this is a this is a whale tail Floyd Rose with the vintage nut. I pretty much go out of my way, and it's very co it, it does cost a lot of money when you do this, but I'll go out of my way to get the same exact hardware that Eddie had on his guitar, the same woods and everything. So when I do put it together and I have my guitar tech set it up, I know that it will play good. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I guess my, my to answer your question, playability is just as important, but I also want to make it as accurate as possible. Now, a couple of my guitars, like, you know, um, my Bumblebee and my VH1 guitar, they're not 100% accurate because they both have, you know, uh, the, uh, the black and white has a Floyd Rose on it, and it's an EVH guitar. So the striping's a couple little bit off, so to speak. But at the same time, also, I put the Gibson logo on it. I put one of uh, Mark Blankenship's chopped up pick guards on it. I've relic it. So I, I will, even on a, a couple of my guitars that aren't 100%, I'll try to eddy them out um, as much as I can. Yeah. For me, the Kramers have always been in the Frankenstrats. You know, have always been my number one. Got to nail this guitar. Got to make it exact. You know, because that's uh, the Kramers. That's 
you know, but why we're doing this show. I, I just love the Eddie Kramers. I really do. Exactly. This, this one the most, you know. He, he, he nailed that one. Well, that's the thing, too. I, I only had the opportunity once to play the um the, the Fender brand, you know, that right. it would be 25,000, you know, retail USA is like 35,000 Canadian. And although it was it was the coolest experience in my life to actually hold it, other than probably holding the real one, I, I would be lying. And this is why I try to be as unbiased as possible. Yeah. Yeah. I When I played it, I hopped on camera. My buddy Darren Moore and I, um, you know Darren, I think, yeah. from uh, Lapeer, Michigan there. Oh, he, you know, here, him and I were playing it together in junior, and junior played it. And when I played it, I struggled, man. I struggled real bad. And it'd be like me if I had the opportunity to plug into a plexi. I would mm. sound like ass if I plugged into a plexi and had nothing in between me. And I played mm. this guitar because it was set up to Eddie's specs. Um, you know, somewhat, I guess there's there's arguments both ways, but it's set right. up to his specs. I mean, the action was much higher than I was ever used to. The whammy yeah. bar, I mean, I could I could sit on it for, for you know, go down three inches before it did anything. Yeah. And so I went into this thing and thinking, oh, watch this, watch me play. And I played, and it's like I—I uh, I think I released about a 15-second video, and seven seconds of that video might have been half as. You know what I mean? So if I was to have one of those guitars, first of all, I can't afford twenty-five thousand dollars to throw on any guitar. But yeah. you know, if I was to have you know someone build me as a friend, you know, here you know, I'll trade you a guitar, you trade me a guitar. You know, I'm not talking about buying a guitar, but trade you—I'll trade you this, like you do a lot of times. You trade somebody. Sure, sure. I would want him to get my action down to the buzz zone where I like it. I want my right. Floyd exactly like this. I want yeah. this pickup, even though it'll look like Eddie's. I want it to be this pickup, so this sound. Uh, who know? Who cares what the tone pot is in there? Or the I'm sorry, the volume pot. You know, as right. long as it looks right. But I want to be able to play that guitar because I don't really want to have a wall hanger. I don't. Right, right. And every one of my guitars, every single one of them is 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 is, is playable. And you know, and, and they're all pretty much set up exactly how I like them to play. I mean, like we said earlier, we'll play that little game depending on the seasons. You don't have a humidifier, so you might have to make some adjustments due to, uh, you know, some, uh, uh, you know, a dry neck or something like that or some fret sprout. But other than that, every single guitar I have is, is playable because, like you said, I just don't like wall hangers. They're not wall hangers. they, they got to be playable for me. Um, there's only one wall hanger I have, and that's just a body on the wall. It's a multicolored the multicolored tape body um because i you know i have the real one right here uh the purple one and uh but you know other than that all my guitars they have to play otherwise i just don't you know i'll try to tweak them out and make them look exactly like they're supposed to and use the same hardware um but they but but i'm a real i'm, I'm a real stickler i'm very picky on that action like you said nice low action right to, almost to the point of buzzing floyd's got to be just perfect that's right i the volume knobs, I hate those ones where you feel like you're turning through molasses. It's just like, yeah, oh, come on. I know. I like to be able to snap it on and snap it on, you know. Um, it, but it's, again, it's how it's how we like to play. That's right. And, you know, you're, you're an incredible guitarist. So obviously you have you have your own your own uh, uh, preferences and everything to that. But we yeah, do, I mean, right. it's. I don't like wall hangers. No. If I'm going to have a wall hanger, it's going to be on my garage outside going to the garage where it's just a decoration where, right. you know, it might not even have real strings. It could be painted on, right? From a distance, right. it looks like 3D and looks like the real deal. Yeah. Yeah. But you want to have the guitar that's going to play because here's what's going to happen. You're going to have a party one day, a bunch of guys coming over. Oh, Rob, grab that one. And you've got like, you know, 14 gauge strings on it. The action's this high <laughs> off of it. They want you to play. And all of a sudden, you pick that guitar up, and oh my God, you know what I mean? You have that one chance to like impress your buddies. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're like, this guy sucks. Let's go back down and get another beer. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know for sure. Um, I had another comment here. It just, I, I lost it a second ago, but let's jump back to the chat for a quick second. Uh, what, one piece of advice I will share I haven't striped a guitar in a real long time. I used to do it a lot, and it was really oh, fun. I, it's, yeah, never even- a story. Go ahead. It's yeah, real, go ahead. And we're going to come back after we say hi to a bunch of people in the chat. We're going to come back to what yeah. I think is kind of the highlight of the entire evening is this purple uh, Pacer Imperial that you have. And we're going to talk yeah. about that. Um, but one thing that I wanted to share a piece of advice. I am I joke with Rob off the air. People always say to me, and I know they say this to Rob a lot, because Rob's a very good speaker when it comes to telling people how to do this and educating people. And we have the patience of Job or whatever. Um, no, I'm not saying Rob doesn't. I'm just saying I don't have patience. People say I have the patience, and I'm like... Wait till you know me. I don't have patience. But everything I want to do, I want to do it now. I want to be the best at this. I want to be the best at that. So I striped guitars, spray paint my guitar, I tape it, spray paint it. And I'm like, I'm looking at it. I'm like, <laughs> it says five minute dry, 15 minute dry paint. So it's, time been, yet? It's, a time yet? it's been 12 minutes. 
and I want to rip the paint, the tape off. And then I got fingerprints all over my guitar. I'm like, oh man, you idiot. And, and I'm seeing myself and junior, we wanted to practice before we started doing guitars again. He did a, we did a mask to the, we went to the, like this really cool craft shop, bought this mask, kind of like you see something in like, I remember that. yeah, yeah Les Miserables or something like that. And we striped it and it actually looked pretty good. But I said to him, I said, look, junior, please wait. And you also have to wait as we know with the temperatures and humidities and lack of, especially in Canada, uh, wait for the good day, not too humid, not too cold, not too dried, not too blah, blah, blah. And we painted and he wants to rip off the paint. I'm like, this is not a quick procedure. Now take, and that was a l lesson for him too, because, and for me, because we had to, like, we're going to do a guitar. We have to really do this right. And where I'm going with that story is I'm going to be an outsider looking uh, from the outside, looking in very soon. We've got a music man here that nocturnal um, Sandra and Eric's mom and Eric are going to do, they're going to do the swirl finish on it. And we're, we're going to upgrade some of the components. We're going to go let's get rid of the, um, uh, the Music Man Bridge. I've got um. We're gonna go black. Uh, Gary right. Gary Kramer gave us a bunch of parts when we were at his place. He gave us um a black Floyd. He goes, hey, dig in that drawer. If there's anything you want, grab it. And we opened it up and it was like, hey, here's like, yeah, it was like <laughs> 47 Floyd roses, n yeah. like 305 pickups, humbuckers, um, Kramer plates. You know, like from from serial number A's to uh, G's, uh, all those kind of stuff. And I got one. I'm just gonna hang a couple up on the wall. I went to actually replace one of my um, my um, Gibson Kramers, uh, Epiphone Kramers, with the, one of these other plates, but the bolt pattern doesn't match up, so I couldn't actually superimpose the plate. That was a bummer. But um, So they're going to do a swirl finish. We're going to do a black Floyd Rose on it, and then we've got these really cool, I don't even know what pickups they are, but they're using the Gary Kramer series of guitars, so they're going to do that. But um, I just said patience, patience, patience. So I'm going to be one of those guys watching them do I'm going to be biting my nails going, you know, like, is it ready? Is it ready? Yeah. And I'm going to want to touch it. And, and she's going to have to slap my hands and say, no, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Patience just, is a virtue. I'm just going to say real quick. Um, I never, I, I got sidetracked, but that Fernandez guitar that my ex-wife bought me, I talked to Scott and I'm like, what am I going to do? So I, I didn't know how to stripe a guitar like the 5150 or anything yet. So I said, I'll start out easy. So I took the pick guard off and I striped the pick guard black. Uh, it was a white pick guard and I put black stripes on it. And I didn't use tape. I just, you know, I, I taped it off into the black stripes. It came out really good. And I'm like, well, this looks pretty cool. So, you know, I'm bringing it to my guitar lesson. And, of course, I'm getting, you know, I'm getting a little better. And uh, my, my, my instructor's name is Matt Kim, real good kid. Just He's a kid. He was a few years older than me, but we were both kids. And uh, he's an amazing guitarist. And he said, you know, if you really want... He said, you're getting to the point now where you're, you're, you're getting your chops and now you're going to want to start, you know, abusing your bar a little bit if you want to sound like Eddie. And he goes, you're going to need to get something with a Floyd Rose. So that's where the Kramer came from. And the second guitar that I painted, it was a Kramer Focus with a pick guard on it, two single coils and a, and a humbucker in the bridge and um, <laughs> rosewood neck. And I striped it like a 5150, but I painted right over the pick guard. Oh, geez. So you, couldn't even, you couldn't even tell that it had a pick guard. That's cool. And I, it, it did. It looked pretty good. I mean, it wasn't totally accurate, but that was the beginning of the end for me. That was the first total guitar and that little pick guard and that Fernandez Strat. Those are the ones that I was like, wow, this is so cool. And then from then it was, from then on, it was, um, you know, I got my first uh, patent pending Wolfgang uh, beginning in 97. And then I was, I would, every time I would find a Kramer, I was just looking for Berettas and Pacers, you know, uh, and I was just going nuts, striping stuff up. And each time I would do it, I got a little better, a little better, a little better. You know, you learn what kind of paint to use, you learn what kind of tape to use. And like I said, back in those days, Eric, as you know, we didn't have all this computer stuff. We didn't have all this. I mean, we had computers, but we, you couldn't blow up the, the screen to life size and, and no. get the exact measurements of the stripes. We were doing everything by magazines. I know. Looking at a small Perfect. picture like yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Scott and I talk about that all the time. We're like, you know, it's like I, I'm more than happy to, you know, pass the torch off to guys like Nick Amendolora and, and, and Craig, you know, Stofko, CHS Guitars and, and Chris, because those guys do amazing. But you talk about patience. I still paint guitars. I mean, my 918V and my hard rock, uh, you know, uh, uh, giveaway guitar, the 85. I mean, I, I did both of those. But it's just my patience level is not what it used to be. So it's easier for me now just to go, Hey Chris, strike this up point. You know, you know what it is? I, I think I know what it is. <laughs> children, children change us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Once you have I kids, right. it's I like, dad, right. I need this, dad, I need this, dad, I need this. And you're like, okay, 
and eventually it's like a, a, the vein starts popping under your forehead and it comes to guitars you're thinking okay let's give it to craig let's give it to let's give it to nick yeah, let's give it to all these exactly. guys i i don't blame you for sure and i've said this a million times and i want to get your opinion on this okay so I've I've now become a Kramer artist, which is kind of a cool cool thing, and I, I love that. I love that. It still hasn't even sunk in yet. I'm still under the EVH umbrella with with their artist yeah. team, um, but and I, I play a lot of Line Six stuff. I'm not a Line Six artist whatsoever, but I love the stuff. That's my tone now yeah. these days is all Line Six. But back in the day, long before I even dreamed of an endorsement, I didn't even know what endorsement meant. Right. Kramer guitars. Now I'm talking cheap ones, three hundred, four hundred dollar guitars, which really back in the day weren't cheap. Right. But cheaper. OK. And I had strikers like the, you know, like the, the you know, humbucker single single uh, with a Floyd two on it. You yeah. know, putting the strings through the Floyd, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And we would upgrade those. I always said and I'll say this to right now, my best guitar playing, even though I played faster back then than I play today. You know, I probably I'm probably a better player today than I was back then. But my best playing overall was on those cheap guitars because you yeah. know you're playing on stage whether you're a 16 year old in your first bar band or whatever or club band or, or you know garage band or party band you smash a headstock you get a chip in the guitar you didn't care about it but nowadays we get like a you know a few thousand dollar prs or you know even you know right. all, all many brands are in, in that bracket or even sure. more um you like you're just you're devastated i just felt that oh, there yeah. was no intimidation factor with those guitars and you just played because it felt good it, you know yeah. When you were in the band 5150, uh, you were the guitarist in, in, the, in that tribute band. Do you remember what your guitar, your go to guitar was back <laughs> in those days? Yeah. I, sadly, not period correct. Well, yes and no, because we were a Sammy, uh, Sammy Hagar era bass band with about some of the classics of Dave thrown in. Yeah. So I was yeah. playing the Black Wolf Gang, which I still have. But here, yeah. here's another thing I'm going to throw some advice out there. If you want to get in a cover band, do it right. I was not doing my part right. I was wearing the striped overalls with a black Wolfgang. I was, you know, the humans being Wolfgang or whatever. So it's yeah. like, Eric, you got to be one or the other. Where are you in this time zone? And I was kind of like, I went back in time and I and I got stuck somewhere, right? And I took my Wolfgang back in time. So um, so I, I did have some Kramers too, though. Don't get me wrong, but I didn't yeah. have Maple Neck Kramers. I had a whole whack of, I had three or four strikers on the road i remember i had one bad gig where i was really bummed i actually literally smashed my kramer striped when i painted it myself and i smashed it and um because it was a really bad night and uh but they're all like uh, rosewood necks and you know that you know sure even though eddie had a couple of those he was not known for that it wasn't the limelight guitars so i'm going to just kind of say for advice really like look at look at your um your fan halens look at your uh you know um you know jake miller there he's doing his tribute band stuff like that uh unchanged yeah. stuff like that really do time period correct stuff because the fans appreciate it you know and it really sells at home like i kind of hate it when you go like to see the guys like in and you know uh you know ball caps and, and chewing bubble gum and all that kind of stuff do it right right <laughs> You know right. What I mean? Yeah. You want to make it look. Yeah. You because that I, that creates the whole experience of bringing you back to those days. Yeah. Because you know? some of these you, places, these small towns, don't ever get to see. Like, I mean, who knows if we're going to get to see Van Halen again? But even when Van Halen was touring on a regular basis, album tour, album tour, album yeah. tour, um, they didn't come to some of these small little five thousand people towns, and right. that the tribute band might be the only thing they ever get to experience. So really, bring it home for them. That's why I like, uh, you know, Van Hagar. They're they're a, they're a New York based tribute band, and I've seen these guys a bunch of times. They're 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 awesome. And Mike, the lead singer, he wears the Sammy wig and the glasses. It's just it's cool, you know. And uh, and Bill, you know, he he plays the uh, you know the Strike Fifty One Fifties and the Frankies, and, and so so it's kind of cool. It is cool to see that because even the people that are watching those shows that aren't Van Halen, you know. Uh, idiots like we are yeah, yeah, yeah. it's you know they still recognize that strike guitar i know it's but iconic like, whoa hey that's one of eddie van halen's guitars oh that's cool you know so it still has that impact and it brings them back to those days especially if they're our age or a little bit older i know yeah. the funny thing is with that though too i find sometimes i could play the same riff if I pick up a striped guitar, now I'm going to show you a guitar in a second, which is going to lead into our conversation here about your guitar in a second, because this is a new version of what you're going to show us. But I can play this guitar, or I can play Junior's, uh, you know, um, or uh, what do you call it, Eastwood Airline guitar that's behind me, or I can play a Line 6 Variax. I can play anything, but then I pick up the, uh, a VH striped guitar or a Wolfgang and play the same riff, and people automatically want to judge, because it's like, 
Okay, it's a Van Halen thing, right? It's like, come on, why do we have to judge? You know yeah, I, mean? I know, I know, yeah, I know. Everybody wants to be the judge, and yeah, I know. That's it's like great. Johnny would always say. Johnny would always say, playing the Circles guitar, the Circles guitar was a gateway drug or gateway guitar into Van Halen, where you could play that guitar in a bar, and someone might think, wow, that looks like a Frank Zappa thing, or or some kind of crazy right. that they might not associate with Van Halen because only us diehards right. would know, right? Right. We a lot of people wouldn't recognize that as a Van Halen guitar. They just think it was that's kind of something kind of cool. Kind of trippy, know, yeah. Like, oh, that's the Unchained guitar. You know, that's yeah. right. Well, you, get you said a, something a minute ago, too, about Rosewood Next, and you brought up a good point as far as the Kramers are concerned. And I'm just going to say this because uh, this is a conversation I was having with uh, a very close friend of mine that's, that's also a big Kramer uh, uh, collector. He's not, a, he's not a huge Van Halen guy, but he's a big Kramer collector. Back in the uh, in the eighties, when Eddie was playing these guitars, if a lot of you guys out there watching the show remember, you could not find a <laughs> you couldn't find like this is my hot for teacher replica. Yeah, you couldn't find a maple hockey stick headstock. They, they, they just didn't. They weren't out there. That's right. They were. You know, Kramer was making them, but what a lot of people don't realize is back in those days, Eddie did not want the hockey stick maple necks out there to the public now some of them got out there yep. because there, there were certain runs of berettas and pacers that had those but for the for the most part eddie was the only one that kramer was doing those for they weren't doing them um you know you started to see stuff on eddie's guitar like this this is you know the jump neck it's got the yep. the, the, the r and the a is chopped off this is the neck that eddie had on his frankenstrat on the jump video and that's my and favorite then, by oh, the way my personal favorite yeah, oh yeah, it's a great, I love that beak neck. And then you saw, you know, his Frankie had this neck on it, you know, mm -hmm. the hockey stick neck in the OU812 uh, Feels So Good video. And, you know, ended up pulling that off in 93, and I think he put the regular strap neck back on. But when I got into this in 96, you couldn't find, you, they, we didn't have Chris Locke building bodies. We, you know, Scott Smith was doing the work, but he, I don't think he was with Music Craft at the time. Scott, so Scott was making a lot of these necks for himself, mm -hmm. but you couldn't sell those necks back then. So it, it was like finding a live dinosaur to find a maple hockey stick neck for a replica. So back in those days, we, we might have had Berettas, but a lot of our replicas had rosewood necks because you couldn't find the maple necks. So now, these days, it's I mean, you can pretty much get it in you'll want, and if you can't find it, you just have it custom made. So it's it's really a great time to be a, a Van Halen fan building these because... You can get whatever you want, and if you can't find it, just have it built. I know. You know? It's funny you and I we talking about this. We couldn't do that then. I know. I was talking about this with you off the air. It's really funny, and I'm not ashamed to admit this because, I mean, I've never really done this kind of thing for a living. I've never built guitars because I'm not a guitar builder by any means. I'm, a, I'm, well, when it comes to do-it-yourself kind of thing, I suck at it all. I can't <laughs> fix a shelf. I can't build prefab furniture. If I build a barbecue, I end up with an extra grill. You know, it's like when I build a model, it's like, oh, they come with an extra engine. It's supposed to be there, whatever. So like, I don't build anything right. But, you know, I would I would paint a guitar and I would fail with it. That's how, I, like I mentioned, I met Johnny Bean. But I would sell a neck. And I remember one time selling a neck and it had some stri striped headstock. And I remember getting an immediate cease and desist legal letter from, you know, not from Eddie, but from Eddie's attorneys. It's yeah. like, uh, Mr. Broadbent, you must refrain from practicing these, you know, online sales, whatever. I'm like... And I was so scared. I remember going to bed at night thinking, oh, my, God, my hero hates me, you know, <laughs> whatever, right? And meanwhile, he has no clue. He has no clue. It's just his attorneys, you know, sending out these letters, whatever. Yes. But it, I remember that really, really funny story to get a, paint, paint the picture, which I know you saw this episode when um, when Dennis Berardi was on the show, um, I think it's my, a couple, about a month back now, was talking about this one super fan. And I don't think he had mentioned his name, but he came, right. to, he came to the factory and he yes. was like, um, he uh, somehow or another he got in, got a bit of a tour or whatever, and he saw the bodies of um, the guitar, striped guitars, whatever. And he said to Dennis, he goes, C "Come outside, whatever." And he showed him his Buick. He had some cool Buick car. He says, "Yeah, I will give you the deed, to my my insurance slip, whatever. I'll give you, I'll sign my car <laughs> over to you right now for one of those bodies." Yeah. And, and he's like, "You you want to you want a body that bad?" And he goes, "Yeah, whatever, whatever." So he gave him a body. He says, "You keep your car." Uh, you get the body and he invited them back for another day to come back on some kind of a session, yep. whatever. So this, and here again, I can't retell a story. I'm going to try my very, very best, but I encourage people. You're to doing watch. good. You're doing good. Thank you. I encourage people to watch the interview with Dennis Brody because it'll be much better explained. So, but picture this and picture Rob or I could have been this guy as well too. So Dennis Brody invites this guy to come back in the office. You're probably going through a dirty, dirty factory and you know, beer cans on the floor, who knows what you're going back to the office. And so the guy comes in and Dennis is, he's talking to this guy and the guy looks over to his right, 
he looks at this guy, looks like Eddie Van Halen. He goes, he's sitting on the couch. He goes, your friend here looks like Eddie Van Halen. And he goes, oh, no, that is Eddie Van Halen. He looks at him again, and his knees kind of shook, and he fell to the floor. <laughs> Wasn't that the coolest story? Can you imagine that? I know Eddie's just hanging out on the couch. What's up, dude? Yeah. Your, your buddy <laughs> looks like Eddie Van Halen. And meanwhile, that's him sitting on the couch. Yeah, yeah, sitting there laughing. Yeah. That would be so cool. That, that would, would be, be very, awesome. very cool. Yeah. So where I was yeah. going with this story, so because I, I'm over the years, I had focuses, I had strikers, yeah. I had Bredas, I had pacers. And to this day, because I sold them all, I sold every single one. Yeah. One so I really, I. really miss. I had a bubblegum pink, and I tried looking through vintage Kramer, and I could not find one in this bubblegum pink. I saw some weird kind. Maybe it was just a weird fluke, but it was a bubblegum pink pacer, and I remember it so very, very well because I had a pink Demarzio guitar strap with it, and I just love this guitar. Uh, single humbucker, black Floyd Rose, uh, yeah. rosewood neck. I would love to get it back. And it just maybe if I got it back, it's almost like playing our old video games. We think when we were kids, we play these video games are the best ever. Right. We play it again. Oh, yeah. like, oh, it's not as good as I thought. I'm pretty sure this guitar would be as good as I thought it was. But long story short, that's the one that got away from me that I really miss. But so after, you know, working with Kramer now over the past year, you know, they sent me this one plus the, um, the one I was playing earlier, the assault, which is like the Les Paul style. Yeah. And I love this guitar. This is the, um, the 2015 vintage Pacer deluxe. No, this is made under the Gibson Epiphone, um, division and I, from what I've, I've one of my fans and friends through the show, they he had a vintage original and they borrowed his guitar to you know digitally you know whatever they do right to replicate yeah. it. And um, from what I'm told, they've done a pretty good job. The guitar is heavy. It's got Seymour Duncan pickups in it. Floyd Rose, beautiful neck. The frets are a little low on it compared to what I'd be, yeah. I would like, but I love this guitar. You've what's got, the headstock look like, Eric? It's got the beak one. on it as well. It's, oh nice yeah it's nice. got the beak on it and it's you know of course they did what was kind of come aftermarket you know what the um the floyd rose floyd rose wrenches and stuff which i've never even used yeah. this one i just used my own that are on the shelf right um, i i think you know it really would be really cool maybe this exists but a wing nut idea would be really cool because you almost have to use a penny or a, you know like right. a coin yeah. a wing yeah. nut would be really really cool so there's an idea if anybody wants to invent that please give me a couple cents on your merchandising um but I, I love this guitar. It's very, very cool. Now, right now, it was it came floating from the factory, and I've made it flush by accident, yep. but I love that. Uh, it came with 10-gauge strings on it, which I just don't I don't enjoy. I brought it down to yep. nines, and I love it. But this guitar has some history. I mean, you're going to show me something that's going to blow this thing out of the water. We're going to talk about a guitar that is very rare, and I want you to show us and tell us why it's rare. Yeah, well, I will, and I'm just going to say that's a beautiful guitar, Eric. I've always wanted Thank one you. of those. I, I love that color. Is that as bursty looking as it is as, as it looks on 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 screen, like with a little? Uh, it's big like, time, big like, time flake. Yeah, it's metal, like you know, yeah. like the old. You remember the like the '80s, '90s motorcycle helmets? You'd know. You drive bikes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It reminds me of the old uh, the old banana seats. Remember the hundred hundred percent like that. Yep. Yeah, I love that. Well, um, just to, this this guitar is basically. Um, uh, probably the great grandfather, or, or, or the grandfather, I'll say, of uh, ah, father, grandfather. I don't know. We're not really that far off of the guitar that Eric just showed. It's a, it's also a pacer. This is um, a guitar that you know I had been looking for 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 probably since the day that I got into Kramer's twenty years ago or so, um, or just over twenty years. And and this was just something that you couldn't find. And thank goodness to the internet, that's that's how we're able to find these things. Because back in the days when I got into it, I would just go to my local guitar shops, and you know, I think I picked, I had more Kramer uh, focuses, and uh, I did find a couple Berettas, and I did find a, a couple Pacers, but nothing like what this was. I think I even had, remember the Showster, the Kramer yeah. Showster. Oh yeah, for sure. It had the real thin kind of body, and you know, really good guitars. I I I, I love those guitars. But I was able to find this guitar, and I'm going to credit my good friend Dave Nesdal because he was um, he was he was one of the ones that uh, um, originally turned me on to it and, and put me in touch with the gentleman that owned it. And this is a purple Kramer Pacer, um, uh, 1982 guitar. It has the uh, Rockinger, which is the original Eddie Van Halen bridge before the, the endorsement deal with Floyd. That's right. Uh, and um, you can tell it's uh, it's only got the two screws in the back panel here. They didn't have the four back then. I only did two. And it's a B0130 is the neck plate. So it's a B. It's a Bravo. 
and uh, maple neck. The only thing I did do is I switched out the pickup. I put a zebra in there. This this was a shallower uh, pickup, and it was black. But Eddie, this was the guitar that Eddie put the multi-tape, electrical tape all over. That's right. The, uh, the white, blue, orange, uh, uh, um, yellow tape that he used, and he, he played it in the Diver Down Tour. He played it like this in this configuration with Alan Holdsworth at the Roxy back in 82. Then he striped it up with tape. And one of the interesting things about this guitar is the Rockinger Bridge, but it also has the Kramer Strat lawsuit headstock. Yeah, they were forced to the, change that. Yeah, with the gold uh, Godot crown head chevron tuners. And those are, this type of a headstock with these particular tuners, it's almost like finding a live dinosaur. Exactly. So this guitar in purple, um, is probably the only one that I've ever seen in this configuration, the exact configuration of Ed's where it was, other than the one that Ed had has. And I've talked to Scott Smith and I've talked to other people, and to their knowledge, I'm the only one other than Eddie Van Halen that owns this in a purple with the lawsuit headstock, the gold chevrons, and the, um, the, the Rockinger. You can find a lot of Kramers out there with Rockingers, but it's hard to find them with these tuners and the, in the lawsuit Strat headstock, and even more rare to find it in this purple. Exactly. So, and there's yeah. there's some rare posters out there. Dennis Brardy had one as well, too, where it actually said the Eddie Van Halen Tremolo. I, I think I showed that on the show. Like They yeah. almost branded it as that. And, right. And that even stumped a few people over at Kramer Forums. I posted about that before, um, you know, before you coming on the show. And I just, mm -hmm. I just wrote this down so I didn't forget again as well, too. I had to open up another browser to look it up. And someone quoted it as, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this word right, but Malaga Purple. M mm. Malaga Purple is yeah. that color that it was called. And they, yeah. they said, you know, it, it's hard to think that there might have only been two made. Now, maybe there's maybe a few more made that they were just kind of thrown, you know, under somebody's workbench, whatever. But then yeah. again, they said, then the fact that it has the Rockinger on it as well makes that like, you know, rare again. It's like, okay, you got right. rare, now we got rare again, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's just a damn cool find. A really, really cool find. I, you know, funny thing was I didn't have the money at the time. Uh, I've had this guitar about a year and a half now. And uh, I had actually a black Kramer Pacer um, with, with uh, maple neck, but it had the, 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 uh, the chicken hawk, the duck okay. neck. And it had gold uh, uh, godos, but they weren't crown heads like these were. And it did have a rockinger, and that was that was a great guitar. Also, it was a jet black body, and I I love that guitar. Um, when when I found this one, um, <laughs> the only way that I could could actually afford it and purchase it was to sell that one, uh, which I didn't want to do. Uh, and then I still had to come up with a little bit of money, but I did get a pretty good uh, price for that one because that was also a rare guitar. But this 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 one this was something I could not let go by it was just one of those guitars that i said I, I have to get this one because as big of a kramer guy as i am and i've always been um because kramer's are my favorite yep. electric guitar they always have been because because of eddie van halen um i had to get it and i and i'm still i'm really glad that i did and i hope it's one i never have to get rid of you know if i find out you're going to trade that one i'm going to come down your way and i'm going to do my best attempt to kick your ass <laughs> I'm going to try. I'm going to fail, but I'm going to try. Um, I'll just give it to you anyway. So. Jeff, Jeff T. wants to know if there's any special wiring on that. I wouldn't think there would be anything special other than, you know, your typical volume tone, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. No, it's just pretty, pretty, pretty simple. You just got your, you know, your, uh, your switch for your pickups. You mm -hmm. have uh, bridge, both, and neck. Uh, and you essentially have, you know, your two, uh, your two volumes and one tone. That's right. And other than that, it's, yeah, it's pretty, pretty simple. Um, the Kramers were a very simple guitar. Um, and these old ones, you can tell they had that rub, that piece of rubber yeah. behind the neck plate. You know, that it's kind of cool. You don't see that anymore. The That's right. Piece of rubber Actually, they do back. they do that same thing with um with the new ones as well too. Oh, do they? They cool. do. It. That's, no, it's it's neat. not it's not a rubber grommet. It's more like a um a plastic insert. If you could picture like a yeah. a cup that'll hold that plate. So they right, kind of tried right. to replicate that. And you know, the funny yeah. thing is as well too, they they were period correct when they made the toggle switch. And and I'm I'm not gonna lie. I mean I love you Eddie Van Halen, but I hate that toggle switch with a passion. I remember playing those guitars, <laughs> literally yeah. cutting myself to death, you know, slashing yeah. yourself on that. But you know it's it's the way it is. They're sharp. You got to be careful, right? 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 No, they're, they're very, very cool. I mean, it's, it's such, such an iconic guitar, a very, very cool guitar. And I'm trying to think of, there's another question we had here as well too. Yeah. Um, but the fact that, you know, it's the it's... rock and you're on it, you know, it's such a, such a very cool, oh, this is a question I was going to ask you, cause I don't know the answer to this. And as you know, you and I are kind of on the same wavelength of things. If we don't know the answer to things, we're going to like try to find out. I've had people right. ask me a million questions. Uh, Eric, why did Eddie do this? Or why did he do that? I don't know. I, I have no idea. Here's a question that I don't know the answer to. So you mentioned the Alan Holdsworth gig and mm. the picture I posted actually in one of the forums was, you know, getting some more feedback on this guitar and it almost looked like hockey tape, but Eddie must've put electrical tape over the Kramer logo. Do you know this was, what was the deal with that? Because Eddie was working with Kramer since around early 82. Um, why did he, why was he not getting paid from Kramer? What was the deal? Why he blanked out that logo? As far as I'm aware, the, the deal hadn't been made official yet. Okay. Um, if, if you listen to the um, if you listen to the uh, interview with um, Jazz Oberlin uh, from 1982, mm -hmm. the phone interview, it's about a, a 90 minute interview. It's really cool. Um, I, I love that interview. Uh, Eddie at the end, and, and this interview took place after that gig at the Roxy because I think he remembers. I remember Eddie saying he, he, he jammed with it with Alan Holdsworth at the Roxy. He spent a pretty good, significant amount of time talking about Alan Holdsworth. He said at the end, he said, please tell your, um, tell the people that you work with that I am now endorsing Kramer guitars. That's what he said at the end of the interview. Okay. So knowing that that gig happened before that, um, my, and I have a picture right on the wall right there of exactly what you're talking to an eight by 10. He's playing this guitar yep. and um, it's, it's got a piece of black electrical tape. Um, my best guess scenario would be, and, and I would probably bet a paycheck on this. I, I can't prove it, but I would, I would almost guarantee you the reason he did that was because the deal had not been made official yet. And there were so many other companies out there at the time. There was Charvel, there was, um, PRS, PRS, uh, uh, what's the other one? Uh, Sector, uh, Specter, um, Schechter, Schechter, Schechter. Okay. There's Schechter. I didn't know about uh, that. They were, they were making Van Halen copies, you know, okay. and Eddie would walk into the NAMM show, there'd be Schechter copies of like that. So he didn't really want anybody at the time of that gig to know that he was endorsing the Kramers, um, even though a lot of people did. And, and, and I think right around the time of that uh, interview, which was a few months after that gig, I think is when it pretty much went, went official news. I can't blame him because who knows, someone comes in with a sweeter deal, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I mean, nothing's set in stone. And, and if you think about it, too, that guitar, this guitar, that one, the one he has, uh, had a had a rockinger on it. And, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to steal any thunder from what Dennis Berardi said, but, I mean, you got he was on your show, and he basically gave this uh, um, this this kind of a... In, in, in this kind of gave this kind of information on that topic. And Eddie was playing that bridge, but he really wasn't satisfied. No. He didn't, so at that time, I think Eddie was kind of on the fence. He's, am I going to stay with this guitar? Am I not going to go? They were they were calling it the Edward Van Halen Tremolo. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, uh, Floyd Rose comes along and boom, you know, they nailed the the uh, the fine tuner thing. So Eddie was with Floyd prior to that. And then he went with a Rockinger because it had the fine tuners on That's it. That's right. Floyd was, Floyd was behind the eight ball again, so Floyd had to do some quick maneuvering, and apparently Eddie did have a lot to do with it, with the fine tuners too. Floyd got the extra jump because in the end, it was the Floyd was just a better unit than the Rockinger. Yeah, that you know? that changed the world once once that once that little uh, teeter totter balanced out, and Floyd, yeah. Floyd uh, took over. Um, you know, both Henry Vaccaro said it. Uh, all, all, all three of the guys I talked to, Dennis, Henry, and and Gary Kramer himself. You know, Gary Kramer was out long before the Tremolos and all that kind of good stuff. I mean, right. You know, he still was a fan of the company that had, you know bear, bore his name. Um, that Floyd Rose changed the world. You know what I mean? Everybody at that point now was licensing the Floyd, and it just become. I mean, the guitar is played different today because of that, and a lot yes. of that. I mean, a big big major portion has to do with Eddie Van Halen. Look how it changed the landscape of guitars. And then of course, you know, everything else that followed amplifiers and stuff like that as well too. But that tremolo right. system, I, people always laugh at me because I say tremolo system, tremolo system, but I, I'm going to still say tremolo system. That's what I say. That's just me. That's how I say it. <laughs> yeah, I know it is. It's, it's the in most incredible thing. And honestly, if you look at it, if you analyze that thing on paper, it's still very archaic, isn't it? It is. And it, it, quite, quite it, archaic. 
and you know, it's funny because nobody, nobody could replicate it. I mean, it, Floyd just had that patent and people would try to come out with something and he'd be like, uh-uh, nope, get it off there. You're going to court. I know. And he would shut them down. I mean, they, you know, that, that, that the, uh, you know, the, this is my 84 replica here, the locking nut that you just could not get that. And, I know. And nobody could do that. And he just, you know, he tapped into a into a um, such an amazing unit from the original, you know, uh, FRT fours and the fives, which are the old whale tails, to the ones that are out today. I mean, it's just an ingenious design, and I'm, I, I still say, um, <laughs> me being such a Floyd Rose guy, I mean, I have guitars that don't have Floyds on them, but mm-hmm. you, you, I just, I prefer a Floyd Rose guitar for my normal playing. I just like it. I like using the bar. Um, it doesn't go out of tune. And for those people out there, you know, like a lot of guitarists that aren't Floyd people, they're like, oh, I hate the Floyds. They're such a pain in the ass to set up. I think they're actually easier to set up than a regular guitar without a Floyd. I, I agree with you. I agree. I, I, I hate to say it. They're, they're, they're so simple if you have that kind of knowledge on how high your nut's got to be. And, yep. of course, it's easier when you don't have it floating. I mean, I, I like mine to sit flush. I have a couple floaters. But... Yeah, me too. Flush, I like flush more. more yeah. Flush. It's just such a simple design, and like you said, it's very basic. It's very crude, you know. I mean, um, you know, like like they always said, you know, and uh, um, you know, uh, this 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 big piece of steel with a big steel block equals magic sound. <laughs> exactly. Well, just just when I thought I almost knew what I was doing, I think you you saw some of this through social media. So a junior there, day wants me to put a new set of strings on his uh, Eastwood Airline. Uh, let's see if I can. I, I'll grab it real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, sure. I, I can I can set up a guitar, no problem. I've never <laughs> I've never changed a Bigsby in my life. No. Yeah. <laughs> so what do I do? What do I do? Okay, clip 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 clip. Six strings, clip them off. And I look yeah. online how to change strings on a Bigsby. Uh, Bigsby. Number one, don't take off all the strings at one time. <laughs> okay. So now what do I do? So we're going down from ten gauge strings to nine. I got to say now too, with now with the nine gauge strings, this guitar will Van Halen. I'm doing a new series of guitar uh, thing on YouTube. Will it Van Halen? This one's going to pass the test of Willett Van Halen, even though it doesn't have right. a few frets, and I can't dive yep. bomb with it. But I, I, sw- I made new curse words, new curse words. So I learned a little technique. If you're going to take all the strings off, like you can put your strings on, you put a capo on, you can hold some tension because you got to wrap it around. And I actually thought I almost had it done, and I had it. So when I, I did a dive bomb, it raised the pitch. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious. I thought, you know what? No, I'm going to leave it because. I'm going to start a new trend. We're going to take big oh, yeah. bees that when you press down, it raises the pitch and you pull back and it dive bombs. I was so <laughs> mad at myself. I broke a string. I, and Junior's like, I broke a string. He's like, dad. And he's so, he's so disappointed in me. And is, you know, you got your kid disappointed in you. What do you do? Right. I'm like, Oh, oh it's my an God. awful feeling. I know. But you know, we go back to what we were talking about Floyd Rose and how much we love them. When I told you earlier about being at Gary Kramer's place. So Gary Kramer's taking us through his, we stayed in one of his two guest houses, and the, and the second guest house, which is a small one, which we stayed in, was something we would just dr- dream to live in, right? I mean, oh, yeah. You, like, you, you, tell, you tell the thermostat to turn it up, how you speak to it, and it turns it up. Um, yeah. So he takes us out to his little workshop, and because he has a winery there, he has, um, like, it, uh, you know what a Home Depot is like? You walk into a Home Depot, right? He yeah. has that for plumbing parts because, you know, if something goes wrong with all the ir- irrigation stuff, he can't just go to Home Depot and buy something. So he pretty much bought a Home Depot and has it at his place. So there's millions of all these pieces. And then he goes, here, rifle through these drawers. You want something? And you open the drawer and there's like, like I say, like 300 Floyd Roses. And it's like, you know, when you go to the dentist and like open up a drawer, take a, a sucker after you've been, or actually a hairdresser, you get a sucker getting yeah, your hair done. Yeah, yeah. I was like opening the, the thing at the hairdresser and it's, but it's suckers are Floyd Roses. I was just like... Oh. I was overloaded, right? I took oh, yeah. I took one Floyd Rose and I took two pickups, and uh, you know, and of course I wanted a chrome Floyd Rose. I'm thinking I'm going to put a clo- uh, chrome on this, blah blah blah. And Junior's like, no, no, Dad, get black. So yeah. Junior always comes first, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. But I'm going to put this guitar back in the stand. I'm going to say hi to a few more people in the chat. We'll wrap up in a second. Yeah. But when, when we come back from that, um, you probably know more about the story than I do on this. But I know Eddie Van Halen had a real passion and, uh, you know, kind of a, not a brief friendship with uh, Les Paul, but, you know, really respected Les Paul. That tribute he did was just beautiful. Um, yeah. You know, uh, with 2011, yeah, yeah. I think, on bass, and uh, I was at Jan Hammer on um, keyboards and all that kind of stuff. That really, really cool tribute he did. We all watched yeah. that stuff on the VHS and stuff like that. But w- the Les Paul that you're going to show us, was that the one that Les gave us and then Eddie did a thing with it, had it painted? Or Tell me that story. 
No, the, 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 I don't have, I have a picture, but I don't have it handy. Les gave Eddie a Les Paul, uh, and I believe it said Eddie Van Halen on the side of it, uh, or said Van Halen on the pick guard piece, but it had a Floyd Rose on it. Okay. No, it had a Floyd. There's pictures of Eddie holding that. And there's also an interview with Eddie with one of the guitar magazines, Guitar World or Guitar Player from back in the 90s, 80s, where Eddie actually said, because he's been friends with Les Paul for, or he was friends with Les Paul for many years. His comment was, yeah, Les gave me a guitar, a Les Paul, but he ruined it. He put a stupid-ass Floyd Rose on the thing. That's oh. what he said. Now, now, that's Eddie Van Halen saying that. You know, mm-hmm. and Eddie Van Halen's the king of the Floyd Rose. But he, it's it, it's almost, it's, it's almost funny when you read that, that interview because he was almost saying we well, was saying i wish he n- didn't put a floyd on it because i wanted the real les paul yeah don't don't give me something from the master and eddie it out like something i'd want i want it just like you would have you know but i mean eddie's had a million les pauls anyways but yeah uh, uh uh eddie had a guitar given to him by les paul and it, like i said it had van halen on it was a um um it was your basic amber type, you know, Les Paul with the with the pick guard and everything, but it had a Floyd Rose install with a with a locking nut. Oh, very cool. Out there. Really cool. I'd love to have one. Now you, <laughs> you know? acquired one uh, possibly recently in trade. Do you have it re- that you can show us? I have a picture. Um, you talking about the one that I we just yeah. saw on uh, the other day? So I was um, my good friend Chris Hubbard. Uh, <laughs> he's a good friend to have because he's uh, he, he's the kind of guy that uh, you know you build a guitar and you just. Okay, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Yeah. Okay, he's getting rid of it. Okay, now I can get it, you know. So, no. <laughs> Chris is always building. He's always doing stuff. He's always, you know, getting this and getting this. And, and him and I have such a good relationship if we're ever getting rid of something. Like like Dave and I have the same relationship. We're getting rid of something. Hey, dude, you want this? Or, hey, how about this? Or So we did a trade. And you guys will recognize this guitar. Um, this is the guitar I'm getting. And it should be coming in the mail. It's the uh, 5150 striped Les Paul with a Steinberger uh, trans trem bridge on it. And it does look like it has a, a gloss on it, which is very, very rare for Eddie with gloss guitars. Yeah, it does. This one had a gloss. Now, I don't know who painted this, but I was told it wasn't Eddie. Um, I, I was told it was actually professionally painted. Now, the the 5150, they're, like Eddie's, they're actually paint. Yep. Uh, it wasn't. They weren't stickers like his fifty-one fifty guitar. But this is about as close as a replica as you can you can do. Now that is not a Steinberger trans trem. It's actually just an S trem with a Steinberger bar. So it looks the part, uh, but it is floating. So you can do the wacky stuff with the yeah. bar. So it's it's kind of cool. So that is a guitar I've always really liked, but it was never one that I really thought about. You know, because you have to go buy a Les Paul. I know. You have to get a, one with the right inlays and the, and the headstock had to be so chris found this chinese les paul it's, it's a chipson yep and uh he got it for a very good price he did the, did all the work to it he actually hogged it out and put the put the steinberger bridge on it and, and did all the routing and everything and uh i mean he said it plays great so that should be coming in a few days so that'll be going on my wall nice so that be a really fun guitar for sure uh, I'm really pumped about that. Yeah. I would have thought for sure that Eddie probably would have not have painted that one because he just had this thing with gloss. Remember back in the day with like the, yeah. well, you've got, you've got the replica that um, Chris helped you build um, the, uh, the yellow black and white stripe one with the Kramer headstock, by the way, down the road, I might be able to help you. If you ever want to switch out that neck, I can probably get you a Kramer um, real aluminum neck. Oh, you're talking about, oh, you're talking about the, uh, oh gosh, you pull your back out, lifting this thing. Yeah. You're talking about the double neck? Yeah. Yeah. I, if I, I will do my best to help you. I, I know that's a plate. I would love to get, get, yeah, I'd love to get a real, this is a, this is a, uh, it, it's, 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 it's a, a custom neck. It's not a real aluminum, but it yep. is painted like one 12 string neck. And, uh, this is about as close as you can get to the, to the real Eddie Van Halen one that Paul Unker built. I showed Paul this, and he was just like, "Whoa, that is so cool!" You know, there's not a lot of these replicas out there. No, really um, but uh, yeah, it's it's a, it's a cool guitar, and it does play great. It's fun to play secrets on this thing. I'll really. bet. <laughs> there's so if you watch the one interview I did with Gary Kramer, the second part where we're at his uh, his wine uh, wine cellars there, yeah. he had the one yeah, guitar, yeah. I, I forget, and I feel bad, I forget which one it is. I think it might have possibly been the Bentley guitar. I think it is. So, mm-hmm. so Leo Scala, his his luthier, built the one guitar out of a Bentley Bentley parts and stuff like that, and I think he did the same thing like you guys have done there. Just use the aluminum plate 
for the headstock on, right. on a real wood headstock. But I, I will do my best to reach out and see if I can get you an, a real aluminum. That'd be pretty cool to complete that package. That would be awesome, Eric. If you ever could find that, that would be that would be so cool. Yeah. The only thing that mine doesn't have on it, it uh, Eddie's had a Rockinger on the six string part. I actually have a have a. Um, it's not a Rockinger on that one because it was actually too difficult just to find the, the gold Rockinger. So I have a. Um, let's actually show it to you. It's easier just to show it. To sure. You. It, it's it's actually a. Um, it's a Washburn bridge, and it's it's a. It looks like it kind of looks like a Rockinger. Okay. Now, see, I, I, it, 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 it takes the Floyd spacing and it, it pivots on two screws like a Floyd does. But I was going to put a Floyd Rose on it because the very few people that have done these replicas usually use a Floyd Rose. The problem is the Floyd hangs down too long and it, it, far and it covers the VH. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, so I wanted something that was a little bit looked like a Rockinger because Eddie never used a bar on it anyway, so it really didn't matter. So I found this Washburn and I said, that looks the part. Now this this bridge is exactly what Eddie had. It's a shallow badass wraparound bridge, and um, basically the strings it's twelve string. So you have your you know you have your your uh, twelve holes in the headstock, and on this end you know the balls go through on the back with the little holes. Yep. And on the tuning pegs it's the other way around. So that's why you 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 tune six of the strings here, and six the other the six you tune down here. Yep. Basically, is it how Paul set it up? It's kind of an ingenious invention. Like you'd say, the old BC Riches Adam and stuff Weaver too. Has a guitar like that. Yep. It's not the Kramer, but you know the yellow one I'm talking about. I it's do. Set up just like that. Yep. BC Riches too. Exactly. Remember yes. they, that kind of same idea. Yeah. Yeah. Very yep. cool. I, I think you you did a really good decision on that because number one, you don't want to cover up the logo, and number two. Right. If we're playing that guitar, do you think we're ever going to use a Floyd Rose as much as we use Floyd Roses? We're not going to we're not going to die bomb on that guitar. Right, exactly, and that, that's that's just it, it's actually not a very uncomfortable guitar to play. It's 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 girthy, yeah, but it's very comfortable to play. I know Joe Suma played it live um, at the EVH Con last year. Um, we did uh, he did Secrets, and I brought that out, and that was one of the highlights. Everybody was like, "Well, look at that thing," because there's not a lot of those out there. Yeah, but. Uh, that's a fun replica. I, I really like that guitar. And I'll just show this one real quick. Sure. Since we're talking. This is another one. Um, this is a, a replica of the Bowling Ball uh, Red Cloud uh, Kramer Ripley, also done by Chris Hubbard. Beautiful now, job. this is a, uh, a lock body, and it's a Music Craft neck. Now, um, it has all the routes to make it a Ripley, but it doesn't have the Ripley guts in it. So basically all it is is just a one pickup, one knob. The tone knob's not hooked up, but it does have the little LED indicator and the switches are all there, but nothing is live. All these these knobs are just there. Kind of ready for later. it does later. have the correct routes Yeah. in the back. So if I can ever find the Ripley stuff, um, I will... Uh, um, I, I can wire it up to, to, to basically be a Ripley, but right now it's basically just a Beretta. Um, he even did the Eddie Van Halen signature on the on the body like Eddie did. Pretty damn good. And rest in peace, Steve Ripley. Um, but uh, it also even has a Steve Ripley signature on the back of the headstock. And I only wish I could have really had oh, it signed by Steve before he passed away. When I was um, when I was at Gary's place, he had a nice Ripley. I've never I've never put my hands on a Ripley before. Never in my yeah. life. And he had one um, with the angled headstock, not not the not banana headstock. And he had told right. me he goes, that's not the original headstock. It had fallen and broke. And uh, so he replaced the neck, but he didn't know that um, Steve had passed. I said, oh, yeah, you know about Steve. It's so, so sad that he passed. And when I told him, the color went out of his body, you know, because yeah. he hadn't talked to Steve in quite some time. And he was just like really, really almost into the moment, you know, to kind of like, whoa, because, you know, they had they had shared some you know conversations and things over the years yeah. and probably some friendship. So it was very sad to, uh, for him to hear that. I felt bad for telling him. But let's um, let's jump over to the chat. We'll say I, I'm like 900 people behind. We'll mm -hmm. say hello to everybody. There's probably a couple questions. So I highlighted uh, Guitar Hack says he will work for food. So I just have to feed him really well, and he'll do the chat for me. So Nocturnal <laughs> Butterfly, find out what Hack likes to eat. We have to get on that. Uh, so David Nestle, as I mentioned, he jumped in and said, Hey, Rob and Eric, nice to have you here, David. I really appreciate it. hope you're well. Wishing you all the very best. Pooh Ninja, Hack Reed Slow, Dale Palmer, I'm here listening, cooking, and eating. Sonia is here, one of our moderators. Nocturnal Butterfly, RJ the Mad One, uh, new to this live stream thing. This is my first live stream. Uh, did my halo hit the ground? I don't think so. I heard a, a ting earlier, but it could have been that. Tacos for Hack. Frank C is here. Pooh Ninja, R2R3, Ladybug. Um, I'm gonna, I apologize if I miss anybody. Walker Family is here. 
I'm so far behind. I know this, and I, I, I will, <laughs> I'll come and cut your grass or you know that kind of thing. Um, I know there's a question towards the end here. I'm just waiting for the chat to refresh because I think I probably crashed it. Okay, I'm going to come from the that tail end of the chat and work backwards. Hang on, we're getting there. We're getting there. All right. Okay. We are all, oh my Lord, in the morning. <laughs> this is horrible. All right, we're going to come back. Ben Coombs is here. You know Ben very well. You did a great show cool. with him the other day. Up, Phenomenal. Um, let me see here. Uh, Rob has a hell of a collection from Dale Palmer, Will Varela, Quentin James is here, Alex Radford, hey, hey, EVH. Um, I, I, I promise you I'll work hard to learn how to do this chat thing. I just, I focus on too many things during a show. Seriously, I have five screens going, so it's, it's too hard. I will, I, one of my goal is here very, very soon. Nocturnal Butterfly is not comfortable with this yet, but I'm going to have her here manning another computer over here, and she's going to have a mic, and she'll funnel me the questions and things like that. So that's coming. Evan Ward is here. Uh, Sean Zimmerman, what about the non finer tuner bridge, Rob? That would have worked, right? Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we would have been fine in that. Uh, and yeah, Nocturnal saying you'll never catch up. I know I'm not going to catch up. I'm just going to go by and kind of make it look like I'm trying, and I am actually trying, but I'm going to fail miserably. Pay for effort. Yeah. That's right. I'm just very, very happy to uh, showman blue saying thumbs up and all this good stuff. I appreciate that. He's he's a good he's a good fan of the uh, entire uh, community. And Dave's taken off. Good night, all good show, boys. Appreciate that. Uh, Stephen Hurd is here. Stephen is a really cool guy. I think he's watched some of your shows. I met him, and this is how blessed I am with the Kramer community because Stephen contacted me through Kramer Corner, the Facebook page. Yeah. And he, he had um, the opportunity to go buy um, a brand new old stock. 1989, I want to say, am I right? Maybe, no, maybe no, earlier, 83, 85, I forget. But anyways, the, the sustainer, whenever the Kramer sustainer was. Um, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, and um, he had a chance to buy a brand new, and he says, I can get it for this price. Is that a good deal? I said, hell yeah, get it. Not only get it, please send me some pictures. Then he yeah. sent me pictures the next day, and then I said, you know what? This is too cool. Come on on the show. And he's like, you want me to come on your show? I'm like, hell yeah why not come on my show and let's talk about it and it it was a it turned out to be very popular you know like just two dudes talking about a you know a rare kind of like 57 chevy hidden in the garage kind of thing yeah. you know what i mean yeah, yeah yeah sometimes these things happen and uh you know it was really really cool so i you, i'm telling you something you already know we get to meet some really really cool people by the passion sure. of guitar oh it's amazing and you know like i said it, and just you know going to the nam show um, and, and meeting you and, and, and seeing everybody else, you know, and, and then having the opportunity to talk to Floyd Rose and Grover Jackson and Seymour Duncan, you know, and obviously, you know, Adam Reaver, who's a good friend of mine anyways. And, and, you know, just, and seeing all these different people, you know, I mean, the people that we read about in the magazines, the people that, that made the gear that we use, that we play every day, you know, it's just, you know, seeing the Kramer guitars and the Night Swan and, um, you know, I mean, all that stuff, it's just, it's just such a great opportunity to be able to, you know, be part of that community and, and, and be part of, you know, since we're putting this information out, like Eric's show, you know, he puts all this information out and he interviews these people. And, you know, I have my own show now and I try to put out information. We're all doing the same thing. We're all trying to work together, and, you know, and, and, and help each other. But at the same time, it's amazing when you have the opportunity to talk to some of these people that were the, you know, the brick layers of, of the stuff that we have that passion for, you know, I agree. So it was so yeah. cool. You know, talking, I, I loved everything that Gary Kramer had to say. I loved everything that uh, Dennis Brody had to say, but I'll have to say, and I'm not trying to pick favorites, but when Henry Vaccaro, you know, we talked to, we talked to him about Kramer, stuff like that. But then when he started to tell his stories and some of the Johnny Cash stuff alone was like, let's just forget about guitar. Let's just talk about that. But he's like, <laughs> can I say one more thing? I want to tell you one more story. I'm like, dude, <laughs> the floor <laughs> is yours you know just yeah. th that guy could do books on tape you know yeah. I mean, he reminds me of my dad you know just like everyone's dad you know like the older yeah. dad I love that man to death I mean just the stories but you, you nailed it I mean whether you're the Henry Vaccaro's whether you're the Eddie Van Halen's whether you're m me or you or Vernon Reed or blah 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 it's all the same. We're all guitar players. We love guitar. There's no caliber. I mean, yes, there is. There's caliber of guitar players. Don't don't get me wrong. Sure. But I mean, at the end of the day, we're human beings and we love guitar. That's what I was trying to say. Please don't twist my words. You know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I, yeah. It's absolutely. all about talking guitar, no matter where you are. It doesn't matter status level. At the end of the day, we all pay our bills. We all put our pants on the same way. You know what I mean? And we all yeah. love guitar. And that's what I think this community needs. Um, 
you know, a lot more of. Just just keep it real, right? And it is yeah. a pleasure. I mean, you're doing a phenomenal thing out there. I love it. I mean, your channel, I mean, is a new channel and it's taking off very, very quickly. I can see great things coming your way. I mean, you've got Johnny and Dave and, and, and all the things that they're doing. There's so many channels yeah. out there. I mean, it's almost hard to keep up. Now, we've got Guitar Hack, uh, who I love uh, to death. We've yeah. got... Uh, we got Jason Wade, and here again, I'm, I'm just going to throw out a few. I don't want to yeah. miss anybody. We got Randall uh, Guitar. We got him out there. We got Ben Coombs Steve. doing his thing. Yeah. There's Steve from Boston. Steve Those from guys. Boston. Um, we got Tone King. We've got Robert yeah. Baker, uh, Pete Thorne, and I mean, these are just a few of the people. Quentin James is doing some amazing stuff now. I finally got him streaming a little bit better. Where he was doing hangouts and stuff like that, and he's got some little bit better audio stuff going, so you can hear his guitar a little bit better. Yeah. Um, I mean, oh my God. My buddy Jason Sedites here in Canada, um, he's starting to do some streams, which he never did before. He's a guy that does all these produced videos and uploads them. He's starting yeah. to do streaming. I mean, it's, it's in one way, it's kind of a sad thing because eventually everyone's going to be streaming and we're going to have to like pick and choose. But right. while we can, you know, we we just we go and I, this is where I'm very, very blessed because I try my very, very best to try to follow everything that's going on. But because if it wasn't for Sandra Lee here, Nocturnal Butterflies, people know her in the chat, number one, I wouldn't be doing this tonight. I wouldn't be talking to you tonight. And number two, I would not even know half of the talent that's out there on YouTube because I'm working away down here. YouTube's close, so I don't get notifications. Rob's live or so-and-so's live or so -and -so, you know, over here, so-and-so's live. I just don't know. She'll text me, hey, Guitar Hack just uploaded the video. Hey, Terry's live, Rob's live, blah, yeah. blah, blah. So yeah. I drop what I'm doing. I get over there and I see it. And uh, it's almost like I have a director telling me, don't miss this. And for right. fortunately, because, right. you know, everyone likes to try and catch the live stuff. That's where it's at is sometimes, you know, we can give all the facts that we want in the live chat. I mean, like, in the show, but people are just having conversations with themselves, which I think sometimes is even yeah. better than what we're talking about. It's funny because when the live stuff first started taking off, what, four years ago, three years, five, yeah. four, five. Yeah, four, five. Mean? People, I mean, YouTube videos were up, obviously, but people were doing the, the guitar stuff. And I remember I started watching Steve from Boston right off the bat. I'm like, this is kind of cool, you know, and, 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 you know, I watched one or two shows and all of a sudden I couldn't stop. I'm always going on to watch, you know, I'm sitting there at night in my laptop and checking out, you know, this guy, not only is the guy an amazing guitar player, but just some cool information. And, and it's amazing to watch people's channels and watch how they get better and they get more proficient and they get more professional and, you know, they just get better at it. I mean, I, I, it's, 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 it's so much fun. And I mean, it's kind of a shame that it took me so long to actually get my channel up, but um, it's, it's just a good time. It's great to be able to get out and, and uh, talk about, like I said, something that you really love and be able to put information out there and have this interaction with people asking you questions and and sometimes correcting me. Yeah. Hey Rob, just say, you know, you know, uh, this guitar was came out in this year. Oh, okay, no problem. Because I'm the first one to say I don't know everything. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I mean, I, I always joke. I'm like, I may not always be right, but I'm never wrong. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I always joke with that. But sometimes you know, if I, I'm even half ass if I even I think I know the answer, I'd rather say, e, I'm not sure, and I'll let you say it right. first, and I'll say, oh, I was way out of line. I was way wrong. Or I was like, oh, you know what? No, I was close. You know what I mean? I'd yeah. rather be. 50 50 then say i know it just just to be safe because there's some of these kids out there they're like 16 years old they'll tell us no dude he was using this color paint you know what i mean yeah exactly it's crazy and like i said i i learn from doing these shows from from the conversations and some of the stuff we've forgotten over the years you know and i know uh, it's it's just so much fun to be part of it and put that information out and get the feedback from everybody it's i love that it's I just agree. a great feeling I just have to give a comment here to Quentin James. He says something along the lines of, I lost, a, I lost where it was, but I, I know what he said. He says, yeah, but the only difference is with him, he's not wearing pants. But when, <laughs> when Quentin James broadcasts in 480p, it doesn't matter anyways. You, don't, you can't even tell. <laughs> I'm sorry, exactly. Quentin. I just had to. And he's, he's not going to be mad at me for saying that because he knows that's only broadcast that. And hey, I've been there before too. And I can't, I can't brag because there was days like month, a month or two ago, where my internet was just like crap. And I was like, yeah. I had to cancel a show for the very first time. I had to cancel a guest within an hour of going live because of yeah. my internet. It was horrible. It was very embarrassing. But fortunately, the public relations people we were talking with, they were like, "Hey, hey, shit happens, right?" But speaking yeah. of public relations, as we wrap up here, I can't believe we actually went. Uh, we went two hours tonight. Um, yeah. So this Friday, I've got a Rob. You want to check this out? Um, and it may not be up your alley, but an incredible, incredible guitar player coming on the EVH segment of the show, Oz Noy. 
Um, Oz, mm. Oz Noy is just insane. Um, his publicist reached out to me, the uh, same publicist that um, uh, represents uh, Damon Johnson from Brother Kane and obviously yeah. Solo, and uh, same publicist as Joe Satriani and Phil Collin from Def Leppard, Jeff Beck. So a really nice public, public relations team to work with. They said, would you like to have Oz Noy on as a guest? I'm like, hell Yes. And I kind of put some feelers out there because I love Oz's stuff. He t- kind of takes like, I mean, he's an incredible player, but he does one of these things where like, let's make some pentatonic look sexy and kind of like skitty scat all over the place. Really good lessons on that. So when I saw that alone, I was like, okay, I'm going to be like trying to make notes as he's talking that night. But um, fantastic show on store this Friday night. Got some oh, I want to check that out. Yeah, cool guests coming up over on Rocking Dead. We've got a couple more uh, Walking Dead celebrities coming up over the next a uh, few weeks and some surprises coming up on the Helix Hour as well too. So trying to balance all this kind of stuff, but this was an absolute off the wall. As you know, we're two hours. I usually do ninety minutes every time. This was an absolute <laughs> pleasure having you tonight. I knew this was going to be good having you. Oh, Eric, it's great time. You know, it really was. I mean, uh, you know, we don't have time to go through all all of the guitars, but uh, you know, it's it's great talking about the Kramers and. Uh, you know, it's 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 an honor to be on the actual Kramer show. I mean, when you first came out with us, I was like, oh, this is so cool. You know, seeing people like Dennis Berardi and Gary Kramer and, uh, you know, I mean, all these other guys you've had on here talking about these amazing guitars that pretty much define rock and roll and, and obviously the Eddie Van Halen uh, end of things, you know. And it's like, you know, it, it's it's because of stuff like this that I still enjoy doing, you know, building guitars. Yeah. Like, my V replica, the backup 5150 with the pointy headstock. You know, Love it's it. it's because of this kind of stuff. I just enjoy doing that stuff because it's you know just it's always breathing fresh life into this stuff. It never gets stale. You know what I mean? I agree, and we're passing yeah. it on to our our younger generation, and they're going to carry yeah. it on as well too. I mean, let's just let's keep our fingers crossed that red, white, and black carries on for the next four gener five six generations. That's all we want. Absolutely. Because long after Eddie. We're going to have these people carrying the torch, right? All these kids like that young kid I had. I, I call him a kid. He's not a kid by any means. Tyler Morris on Kramer Corner a few weeks back. Yeah. The kid's a genius. He's, 20, yeah. he's 23 years old. He, I think he looks like he's about 18 years old. Phenomenal. He's one of the guys carrying the torch. There's many more like him as well, too. So carry that torch. Rock your guitar, whether you're at a, a basement level or a touring level. Enjoy your guitar. Share it with the world and have some great fun. I'm getting lots of comments in the chat about Oz Noy. I'm really, really glad. Uh, Will Varela wants to know if you have an email address, so you don't want to mention on the air. What's the best way for a, a, a person to contact you without giving your direct contact out there? Uh, just uh, uh, Instagram. Uh, my Instagram is uh, uh, robcj5150. That's my Instagram name. Or Facebook, just Rob Johnson. Um, and uh, subscribe to my channel, um, which is Rob ZVH Guitars TV. Uh, it's on YouTube. And, uh, you know, contact me any, any way you want through the messaging. And um, I, it's funny because... Uh, since I started doing my show, I mean, I've always had people messaging me, Hey, you know, Hey Rob, how do you, you know, build this or what kind of paint do you use for this when you do this and do that? And I try to make it very clear, you know, we don't sell these guitars. We build them and, Mm -hmm. um, you know, because it's obviously against EVH policy. Just trade with our friends and stuff, make them for ourselves. and stuff. Right. Yeah, exactly. And and I'm always more than willing to help other people do it. As a matter of fact, um, just, uh, I am, this last thing I'll say is, uh, um, uh, I'm actually our friend Jimmy Carr. You know Jimmy Carr. Yep. I'm actually doing a, a painting a guitar for him uh, in the process, and I'll just show you a quick picture of it. This is kind of a rare Kramer that you guys, Eric. I'm sure you've seen pictures of it, but this is the Seattle Hard Rock Kramer. All right, and this is it right here. It's, it's this one. This isn't the Seattle Hard Rock. Okay. It's got a pickup ring on it, which is interesting, yeah. and it's it's got a straight humbucker, and this is what the headstock looks like. It's kind of cool. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. So it's got a black Kramer uh, uh, logo with all capital letters. And that is the guitar that's in the uh, Seattle Hard Rock. So when I was out visiting Jimmy Carr a few weeks ago, we were playing guitar. And he's like, yeah, I'd love to build this guitar here. So I was like, all right, cool. I'll do it for you. So I'm in the process of of painting that. So I still do paint these guitars. But ever since I started my channel, uh, you know, a month or so ago, I just been getting inundated with messages and hey, <laughs> yeah. how do you do this and how do you do this and yep. hey, can you do a show on this guitar? So the only thing I'm going to say is I'm going to try to go through every single Van Halen guitar and do a special on it and the history and stuff like that. And I want to thank Eric and and uh, Nocturnal Butterfly and and everybody that watches the show. I mean, it's just great having you guys on there. So um, 
and it was it's 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 a total honor like i said to be on the kramer corner show i gotta get one of those t-shirts i'll get you one for sure and the cool thing is with all these people that want the interest in these guitars that's nice content already in the can basically you just got to make some notes you've got 30 yeah. some odd 40 some odd shows coming up you can talk about them. that's great yeah a um, couple nice comments um blackjack said something share the love of music coffee drinker do you know brian Cazell in the community yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he does some great yeah. stuff. I mean, I'm really yes. impressed with his builds. Really impressed. Oh, yeah, he does a great job. And he, yeah, him, him Brian, and I, Brian's awesome stuff. Yeah, the way we met was more so through Helix. Um, yeah. You know, we got talking about Line Six Helix stuff, and he he was the first person to pioneer this um, kind of the wet dry wet. Um, right. You know, that's when I first discovered Helix. I, I, I was looking for Van Halen stuff. He pointed me in that right direction. We traded some ideas right. back and forth. So very cool. Love him to death. He's just jumping in. Uh, Chlorine Bacon Skin, one of our longtime, longtime supporters, is jumping in saying hi, Lewis. Uh, Janice Lala. Um, I think maybe Janice is maybe jumping in late. I'm not sure if I saw her earlier. And unfortunately, we, we are wrapping up. Um, phenomenal, phenomenal show tonight. Um, I mean, as far as guests uh, in the chat, Rob. I mean that you you sold it, man. Thank you so very very much. Uh, this was a this was a, a damn blast. Well, oh, it always is hanging out with you, Eric, and it's always is it's it's a, it's it's an honor, like I said, to be on your show, and it's an honor to have your subscribers and your your fan base, uh, you know, uh, listening to our conversation. And like I said, I uh, continue to watch Kramer Corner, continue to watch the Helix Hour, the EVH show. I mean, Eric's got some amazing stuff, and I'm. I'm always blown away at the guests that he has on. It's a very professional show, um, and it's and it's done with a lot of good style. And and, and when I do my show, I'm, I'm always trying to make it to that that level. <laughs> you know, I got a ways to go, but I mean, like I said, I you know we we like to have fun. That's what That's it is. Right. We, we all want to have fun and have a good time. And the more people that we can, you know make say wow two hours has gone by holy crap you know that that's know. that's a whole run right there that's a good thing that's right yeah that's right exactly. as long yeah. as as long as people go live that is the hardest thing even if you have four subscribers if you have one subscriber that's not yourself which i don't think right. you can subscribe to yourself anyways if you have one subscriber take a chance well you can't you can't go live if you have one subscriber i think there's a, a limit you have to have but what i'm trying to say is dive in dive yeah. in and you're going to be scared you're probably going to have a few things and i'm not saying you i'm saying the general public right oh, yeah. you're gonna yeah. you're gonna have a few flops you're once in a while you're gonna have you're gonna also you're gonna learn something you're gonna, wow people are enjoying this people are starving for content just do it whether you're talking about plumbing or guitars or yeah. makeup whatever blah 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 do it and i didn't mean to laugh a minute ago when you're talking you're saying something very very serious i'm laughing because there's girls asking for your phone number <laughs> 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 of course they are of course they are what a way to end up what's the takeaway from tonight's episode forget about all the guitars we okay what's your number rob we have to give it to him we'll have to get you we'll have to get you like a forwarding number listen yeah, yeah, I know. Gu guitar hacks is a great show eric and rob i appreciate it. have a great night all uh janice lala i want to go live do it janice do it do it uh, we'll do be it. there to support you we'll be there to support you for sure um we'll make sure we're all subscribed to turn on those that's a that's the important thing number one um my my channel or rob's channel or both subscribe and hit that mother effing bell to turn on the notification make sure you got all notifications yeah. on and even if you think you are subscribed and double check it because some yeah. of our subscribers will say i didn't get your notification double check it's not a problem yeah. on youtube's end I, I everyone wants to throw youtube under the bus and they are they are robotic and they can have problems but for the most part it's usually human error. Something has happened and you've untoggled something. So make sure notifications are on and then you get these notifications so you don't miss the live shows. I've missed some of my friends' live shows and I feel so bad after. I was like, oh man, because they support me and I want to be there as well too. Oh, Jensen Bell just did a $5 super chat. Thank you, Jensen. I appreciate that. I don't know you, Jensen. You're new. I think you're new here. Thank you. I appreciate that. And Awesome. I, I know I can say this for Rob. I'm not speaking for you, Rob. But I'm going to say this anyways. I know you have the same mindset as me. We will work just as hard to keep you as a subscriber as we did to get you. So please subscribe, and we will work until the cows come home to keep you as a subscriber. Absolutely. This was fantastic, man. Let's do this again. Right. Uh, let's break this yeah. into a three-part series. We're only into – we're going into April over the course of, let's say, maybe June, August, and November. Let's get you back on again. And we'll, sure. we'll break some yeah. of these segments out. And I don't want to step on your show whatsoever, but you know, I don't want to talk about the same things you not, talk about, but we'll find all. some things we'll that we can work out and, and we'll have you back again. How's that sound? Perfect. Be honored. Absolutely be honored. And thank you for watching my show as well. And I'll continue to, uh, you know, 
stay in tune with all the stuff that you guys are doing. Like I said, it was it was a blast to be on this show. It really was. Fantastic. Well, listen, don't go around and say goodbye to you off the air. Everyone, thank you so much. I feel like it's Friday already. we got four more days to get through the week. We'll get through it. We'll see you on Friday night with Oz Noe. We'll have some more fun. But uh, everyone, red, white, and black forever. We love you. See you next time. Have a good night. Cheers. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to check out our full lineup of Kramer Corner merchandise available for purchase right now at broadstash.com.